If you have just joined us, you have picked the most wonderful time to do so. Welcome to Sao Paulo, Brazil. Look at it in all of its glory. Welcome to the six invitational playoffs right here, right now. My name's Ian Chambers, joined on the desk by the man on the end, the biggest brain in all of Siege, fresh. He's right. And the three time, the three, we may as well call him MC Hammer by now. Fabian joins us once again, Fab. Give me a smile, will you? I, I'm just insulted that you called him the greatest mind of uh, Siege. The biggest, that's it. Oh, that's I the mean, greatest? I yeah, I don't know. It's, he's been relegated once, that's more than me. <laughs> just to say, the next match up here on the stream will give you goosebumps. This is the sort of series that gets the blood pumping in all the right places. Just seeing it on screen. G2 Esports versus Team Liquid. It's huge, Fresh. Oh, it's absolutely massive. These two teams, their history within this game as well. The history is the two esports orgs competing against each other. It basically, in esports, does not become any bigger than this. First, I want to just back up for a second. Yeah. In which places specifically? What, the blood pumping? Yeah. You don't want to know, brother. Let's take a look at G2 Esports now. These guys, it's a tough run, right? They smashed through everybody in the groups. 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0. Then one loss in the playoffs, Fresh, and yep. you're right down in the mud. It's a tough old game, isn't it? Yeah, it's really rough, this bracket. Had they won, obviously, they would have made the main stage at ultimately whatever happened. They didn't. They ended up losing, going up against FaZe, and that's the big thing again. They've lost against another Brazilian team for us. Uh, their big losses this year for G2 was the quarterfinals of the Copenhagen Major against Liquid, the semifinals of the Atlanta Major going up against W7M, and then the loss in the upper bracket against FaZe yesterday again, and the one common fact of all those three losses, it was against a Brazilian opponent. Yeah, it's some sort of ghost that exists. Like, they are booed by G2, by the way. Sorry yeah, but they booed everything. They, they, they don't know what they're doing. <laughs> they, they, it's Yeah, it's a ghost that exists in playoffs for some reason, and it seems to have a common tendency where everything just starts to shut down in the middle of it. I would like to look at facial expressions, and because I know them and I work with them, I know what went on in Copenhagen. And in Copenhagen, it felt like, well, at least according to Carl, the Maldain game leader, it was like they knew every step ahead of us. And when you have that feeling inside of your team that will obviously move on, yeah. radiate from your in-game leader, and everyone else will struggle as well. Fabian, staying with you, let's talk about Benjamaster. I know that you're a little bit concerned about him because if G2 are to get where they need to be here in Sao Paulo, he needs to cook, doesn't he? So yeah, Benny had an amazing group stage. I mean, as you said, Ian, they completely smashed through all of it. Yesterday, I didn't see the Benny that I'm used to seeing, and I understand that people have bad days, but the performance he had today was so uncharacteristic of him. I'm wondering if something's going on. I hope, so for his sake, it doesn't. Felt a little bit yesterday like he was trying to force it a little bit too yep. much. We yep. saw him try to force entry kills where they weren't happening, not using his utility. There was one on Cafe where he's running, knows where a guy is, has a flash to just kill the guy, doesn't, tries to swing him, doesn't happen. But there is a graphic. Yep. There is a graphic that I think will give people hope. More Benja graphics. That's this like was Benja Master 6 Invitational 2023. One yeah. year ago, the MVP of the tournament. He has the potential. We, he doesn't even have the potential. No, He's he, realized he, the yeah, potential. We know what He's literally one of the best players in the world. One bad game yesterday doesn't necessarily make a player. No, but it is a little bit of a fear, you know, because if you have that bad of a game, maybe it gets into your mentals a bit. Maybe you feel like you were the reason for why we lost. I don't think that will be today the case, but you definitely never know. Let's talk about Team Liquid now, shall we? Fresh, they came through the lower bracket. They've already played today. They're making noise right now. They are very much up for this one. Do you think the fact they've already played is a benefit or a negative? Because they were dominant against Falcons. Yeah, so there's, a, there's definitely... So this happened yesterday with Wolves, right? They played up against W7M. And why am I speaking about Wolves? Because it's relevant. Wolves played up against W7M. It was a mad series. It went all the way across three maps. And then Wolves played in the next game and had absolutely no energy. Could the same be said for Liquid today? Probably not, because the series that they played earlier on today, to be honest, it was piss easy. They got a 7-0, and then they should have capped it off with a 7-1, 7-2. It was a very, very easy game for them. So the fact that they're warm coming into this, and G2 were you know, potentially cold, not played since they played yesterday against FaZe, could be a determining factor. I think there are so many positives that play into this as well. Yeah. Because if we look at the experience that the players have in Liquid in comparison to Wolf again, 
we have a lot more experience than Team Liquid. So them playing three maps, well, two maps earlier, and then just now continuing, I think it's just a nice warm-up, get into the fields, get into the flow of things. The most important part, I feel like, was that both Lagonis and Volps had really, really good games earlier today that they haven't had earlier in the stage, and all, or in the, in the tournament. And I also think that both Nesk and Palu that have had a little bit of a rougher game, which is, well, it is difficult when you're playing against an unpredictable opponent like Falcons, where they are just trying to go for raw aggression and individual performance. You can't predict anything. So I think if they keep up what they've been doing previously, together with Agonis and Volps coming back and actually starting to get alive a bit, we're looking for a very, very good game. One thing that might make things a little bit easier to predict is map vetoes, and we are ready to see where this best of three series will play out. And Fresh, I'm fascinated to get your take on this because, you know, we do this every time, but it, it almost adds that extra little bit of spice when you know it's G2 versus Team yeah. Liquid, right? And you know what's interesting with the map vetoes is that these two teams are juggernauts. They both yeah. have huge map pools. They therefore have very similar preferences. So the maps we're going to are in the top four preferences of both teams at this event, and they're kind of high to middle preferences. Now, there's an interesting story with every single one of these maps. So Oregon, Liquid have picked. Now, G2 would only allow that open considering Liquid won this earlier today against Falcon 7-0, if they had seen something. They've definitely seen something because G2 have picked attack, despite the fact that Liquid won six defenses in a row earlier. And to build even more on that, Romaglio as a coach, knowing how he works, he's heavy counter stratting coach, which means that those six rounds he saw in defense, he knows how to break. I'm a little bit surprised that Liquid picked the map, especially when they know who they're going up against and the coach that they're going up against. I don't think... Anybody here, of course, wants to see either of these two teams or anybody watching at home exit this tournament. But I just want to shine a spotlight on Liquid for a moment here, because if Liquid do drop out here fresh, it's going to break a lot of hearts of Brazilian fans that have bought tickets for this weekend because they're the biggest name in Brazil, right? They're the biggest name in Brazil. They're the best supported. And, you know, there's a lot of hopes and dreams of Brazilian fans pinned on Liquid. Now, don't get me wrong, should Liquid lose, it will be another Brazilian team that they support because they will want Brazil to win in Brazil. However, this would be an absolute... Whoever loses, it's an absolute juggernaut going home out of the competition that you would not expect. Yeah, I mean, both these teams have massive pressure on them. As we say, Liquid are the darling of this country. Everybody loves them. G2, they have to defend their title. Like, the game is massive. The support that Liquid has from their fan base, that is even more precious. It's just like... This game really shows do either of these teams have what it takes. But speaking of having what it takes, when it comes to high pressure, you know, it doesn't really get bigger than this. It's, you know, elimination series are hard enough as they are, but when it's up against such a big org and such a fierce rival, Fab, how much does that play into things? I, I don't think it plays into it too much. They're both here to win and they don't really care against who it is. Maybe it will have a little bit of an impact on G2, seeing as they know that they've had playoff ghosts with Brazilians. So maybe that's the only part where it plays in, but I think all other players are just, it's another game. We need to beat every opponent to be the best in the world. Well, these guys are just the ones next up. What have you made about the, the vibe in this room, um, just getting into this first map fresh? Because it looks to me like Team Liquid are super uh, focused, laser beam focused and yeah. ready for this one. Uh, and G2 are very much the same old G2. You know, they're listening to Eminem on a big speaker as, as we're about to go into this. They're all laughing and joking. Doki was pulling faces at me just a matter of moments ago. Like, but that sometimes could be a, a you know a privilege, a preference maybe? I think for both teams, they're probably gonna try and go about this business as usual. G2, whether, you know, whenever we've seen them, especially when they've been in the upper bracket or the groups, it's been very much business as usual, the big smiles. They're the most interactive team with, you know, with us. Um, and I think that's what it's about. It's about keeping the game day ritual business as usual. All right, well, it's about to time to get into business in the server. It is map one of G2 versus Team Liquid. And we've got Fluke and Hapcom in this one alongside a very special hairy beast of a man. Thank you very much. It is the hairiest beast. Well, it's a classic game of classic teams, so I thought, why not get the classics master himself, Mr. Losh Milosh. Hi. Thanks for having me on. It's an Curious. honor to be on here. Not Milo. just... Milo. Yeah, Milo. yeah, that's yeah, me. Milo. Not just because it's G2 Liquid Elimination Game, as the desk was talking about, but because I get to cast this with my friends, and I really love that. Aww. Aww. Even half. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Beforehand, Parker also said Whoa. that he'll hap there in the cast. 80%.
in the favor of G2. Sort of makes sense. Now, if you're unaware of how the run of these two teams has gone, G2 hadn't dropped a map until they dropped a series, and now they are here in that sort of sticky situation. They hadn't dropped, uh, you know, a showdown at all. You go from being one of the top teams and the top team to fighting for your life within one missed moment. Uh-oh. Oh, indeed. I mean, that, that game yesterday, G2 versus FaZe, was an incredibly close match. Yeah. And the, the big conversation we heard it on the desk, and everybody's been saying it in the cast, that you have Ramalho also behind G2. You expect G2 to know how to figure out Brazilian teams better than anybody. And yet yesterday, the blunder happened. Today, can they fix it? But also, you want Liquid to move through, darlings of the region. I, I don't know. It's are they, they truly are the darlings. I couldn't imagine a team that would get a better reaction. At this sort of event, uh, I mean, I, I, when I was, you know, we were casting an SI Paris for the for the first time, our first SI. Uh, we have, of course, had like the Liquid versus NIP showdown in that grand final, and I didn't know who to root for because when I ever got into esports, NIP was like my favorite team. But at the same time, like the story of Palo and Nesk finally raising that hammer would have been so insane as well. And ever since, I've been wanting Liquid to do well and just win a like a major or like even the SI and hopefully they can make a far run. But it would come at the cost of G2, which are like the best hope that Europe might have. <laughs> I mean, Virtus Pro have been playing well, but G2, they're the reigning Hammer champions. Yes. They did it in lower bracket run last year. Last time they were dropped down in the very first round by Wolves, who have found themselves suffering at the same second. Uh-oh, they play on the other stream, or are currently playing on the other stream for their own life. So we could end this day with only one EU hopeful left after all three came through in the upper bracket. I mean, I have to say, with only three European teams coming in, I'll, I'll say it right ahead. I, I'm no longer a caster, so I can say I'm definitely biased towards the EU side, so that's, that's completely fine. However, we, we want the best to move through, and if EU is not the best in the match, then so be it. The better team will win, and they will be the team to actually deserve that hammer. Now, we do have the sense coming through to get it with the glass from Elamau. So it is uh, going to be yeah. good to see where this is going to go as we're heading into the laundry room. So basement. I'm just doing the, uh, the plane I'm doing the sound the of a plane. <laughs> I'm doing the sound of a plane as it goes around. I'm a professional 30-year-old. <laughs> Same. <laughs> All right. <laughs> the take here underneath with the eyes on a, a bit of Benji Master action. They, they had the great graphic beforehand. He hasn't had the strongest year outside of the strongest possible performance at a major. But that is what happens when you set the bar. It's not only a rookie on their first aside last time, but a rookie who did it with only about a one month on the team. Yes. I mean, it's not like Liquid are moving too much around the map. Sometimes you see teams roaming. That is not really the case here. G2 will just have to plant things. It's a defense meta. You're expecting it this way. Alamo bringing the glass. For those that don't know, it's not actually Changing unusual mats. to have it on Oregon for nope. this sort of take, but you have to play it properly. As they steady themselves towards it, to Rao might be able to buy them sometime. The new operator uh, has some cool that they can keep against potentially the hatches. Not that one. Seems to be the drive when you've got Blue Wall, when you've got Freezer Wall, or even Moto, depending on playing against it. There's no Kaid, so it'll just be a sort of matter of delaying and delaying and pushing G2's approach. Uh, Freezer's not going to be the bait. Yeah. There it is. The, the Zoda Canister is going to give Maverick some work to do. He's also a little chilly himself. <laughs> I was going to say, he should be on the meeting hatch. This is the most important hatch and really to, uh, to have control of. So if you manage to keep that one shut for a little bit longer, a lot more time gets wasted. The Terra is also being used just to prepare for the execute. That will come down in about 30 seconds from now, making sure that G2 can hit from multiple different sides at the same time. We have Uno, uh, who's ready on the laundry stairs. You see a bit of presence as well on the uh, freezer side and the rest looking to drop E-Box. Holding patiently at this point. You're sort of expecting the moment here, but what do you think they're waiting for, Milos? Honestly, waiting for the right information. You have the Flores here who can destroy all sorts of utility that is on the site. The Tubarao, you just have to wait them out, and that's exactly what happened. But you have to wait for that proper timing and maybe eliminating one player either here on the Shaiko spot behind the pillar or in Freezer. 30 seconds left, just about. It's all gonna have to come very quickly as Doki finally gets the clearance here onto the bottom of blue. And the break starts to come right across Laguna, swinging wider and wider onto the pillar side. The blinds in the cover of the smoke, they might just move in and amongst it. But when you're up against your own smoke, well, you're gonna be inside there's just as much the roll of the sends. The roly polies are out and so is the player. The kit is cold. The players are a little bit hot. Laguna's have reset the Nesk. 
all across the board. And Alabama, as I said, is falling right into the smoke. Cannot do anything about that at that range. And enough time wasted for Liquid to make their mark. It was a very late execute that we were seeing, but before that, there was also no real pressure point whatsoever. Entry kill came in at about 22 seconds left on the clock at that point, so it was a full on five on five execute. Using those, those sense gadgets as well didn't really work out, didn't really have everything covered, it was just for a single angle. As a result, Liquid, just the cleanup crew out there, didn't really have to feel stressed whatsoever. It's difficult to roll your roly polies from the sense. <laughs> they don't and go in the best yeah, way. Yeah, because you, you really have to place yourself properly in the hatch above, yep. and even then, gravity can sort of to take its own toll and effect on it. It was nice that you had the pressure off on the side, as you Dagger's saw, but there you go. That's the that's drop. There wasn't Dagger. much pressure that could be done on other angles. Drop Everybody bottom. funneled in. You lost the fight at the bottom of, uh, of tower, exactly here, because there was no pressure on the Wamai, and the last came too late. Doki could not capitalize on the amount of craziness that was happening on the site to actually find an opening. And it's just, it's, I mean, come on, it's basement defense and a defense meta. Liquid played it properly, and it's very difficult to break, no matter what even some of the best teams in the world can try to do. Obviously, several different storylines coming into this. Brilliantly raised by our dream team, Desk. However, the one that sort of cites the most concern, I think, for the side of G2 is their love letter to Brazil. And by that, I mean <laughs> letting them get past them every single major. As Liquid proved back in Copenhagen, the team that sent G2 packing there, and then Liquid clawed their way to the final itself. Take note as well, if G2 had won that game, Liquid technically wouldn't have had enough SI points to be here. They would be short an extra about 120, which would move them below BDS and I think a couple of other teams. Wow. So their run there, the importance of that game got Liquid here. And they may be able to double down and take themselves even further. So thank you for getting us here. Now let us send you home nice and early. That's kind of the, the motto we're under then at that point. Attic is being opened up with the Heartbreach gadgets. Doki is putting up some pressure there. Uno is on the premise as well. Of course, has Maverick, so could use those blow torches to create some nice line of sights that could be covered from the staircase. But for now, they just want a nice and easy openings. When they do start pushing the attic, though, Frost Mats on the bottom of pit, so that might catch actually a player off. Actually, this is an incredibly defensive setup from Team Liquid. On our own screens, we see one player kind of roaming away, but the rest are staying on site, and Reset is trying to hold on to this connection. They're doing their best, but you can also see G2 are trying to knock on the door a lot earlier. Last time, it was a very late push. They were still clearing utility with a Flores drone with only 30 seconds left. So this time, a little bit more attentiveness, a little bit more drive towards the push onto Attic. We saw a glimpse of Volps far on the opposite end that can cause some problems with the C4, but because there hasn't been any pressure onto Walkin, there hasn't been anything from G2 onto Armory really directly as of yet, it gives them a second to, to build, to rotate and reestablish. They've just found out Volps is down below though, so they do know there's only four people on the side, and look at the bees out here spotting out three of these players. It's gonna be absolutely huge. Opening up of the attic as well, allowing Vengeance to go into the five, but Alamar finds one before Recess trades out into Vengeance, so a four and four, and we go. That was the flanking player of Volps going Reset. He's trying to move it amongst the bees, but it's a terrifying fort and forces. They suddenly show up in force. Resets is going to go for a wider retake here as Lagonis gets Alamau, gets the cut across. It's Doki, yeah, and then it's oh. Resets with the double. I said he wanted the retake, and he hops up and puts the two players to bed, leaving just the Australian player Virtue left alone with 30 seconds. Goes down to the bottom of white, but everything is as noisy as you like, and a shotgun. Twice in a row has been the punctuation at the end of the round. Game sense extraordinaire. Resets immediately turns around. And for those that aren't also too familiar with the setups on here, a lot of times you'll see Mira being placed just to kind of cover the, the connector from bedroom into the attic. That was not the case there, but somehow it just works out because you had an open space with your with an operator. Early technical timeout to be called oh, by G2 here. Yep, very early. I was going to... Sort of see, they, they, they've seen those two rounds and they've said, no, 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 we are letting this get away from us. I mean, you, you kind of see it, right? Like the setups, and, and it started off with the uh, pit play as well. Flashbangs being tossed in, but there's no real response coming from it. There's also no challenge at the player as soon as they do hop back in. And resets, finding those two kills from the bedroom, just not covered off. Lack of information being out there for G2. 
Two very deserved rounds for the side of Liquid. G2 had no business winning either of them and of course didn't get close to either. So they really needed to talk. They really needed to uh, get themselves back together. Normally just for a quick reminder to the team at what they're coming here to do. And it's good to have that talk now because there's so many teams that have been incredibly frustrating for us watching from the sidelines. There's a lot of teams that do not actually get to use their timeouts, even in tough situations. We've had it even up to today and yesterday. So you have to use it. Ramalio is a coach with a lot of experience, getting to call it, seeing there is an issue. If they're able to flank and let resets turn all the way around and catch us off guard, there's a big issue we need to fix right now before it slips away. What is it about Brazilian teams that are so scary to G2? What is it about them that their mental starts to find itself struggling when they are more than happy to declare themselves as the biggest mental team? Honestly, coming into this game, I saw Liquid as the most down I've ever seen them. Yeah, they and have been. They just activate. Statistically. <laughs> yeah, and they just activate again here versus G2. I mean, rightfully so, and again, like Liquid, They've struggled and it looked like a bit wobbly at the start of their group, but they've managed to make it out and have the opportunity to push on now here against G2. Again, many Brazilian fans adore them. Many fans from like outside of Brazil adore them as well for uh, just, just how long they've been around in the scene, especially Nesk and Palu. It's a lot of players that take a lot of inspiration out of those two. So seeing them go and do well, a lot of people will be happy with that. But we are headed towards the dining site. Um, that means that the small tower is going to be quite important. You see instantly does Rotero actually stunned or EMP'd and the stun grenades come out. But it's Nesk who's playing around with the warden, has those glasses, will still blow up their Rotero. And that means that that shield will fall. I mean, it'll always ping. It's only a temporary last and Virtue gets one. The swing round from Adamant doesn't connect, no! The SMG not locked in, but Benja should be able to pick up the pieces of the player. He's breakdancing. You just saw him. There it is. Now they'll get the reveal. Benja's inside the site. The E1D will buy him a second at a time, but that is all that is being traded right now. It's time, Virtue. Finds Nask. Palu, he's crept his way back in for this engagement. They're either side of the Finca, so they're just going to see if they can try and force the first, but another EA1D means we have to stop. We have to take this moment. And this break as G2's gone back to the balls to try and find where the players are. Has Palo been missed drone? Yes, he has. I just saw the drone come in and leave, oh. but he gets traded out. Luckily, Volps though strikes onto Benjamin Master, leaving him in a 1v2 situation now with a player right behind the B bomb chassis and one is security. He has some tough choices to make. One minute 20, Volps. They're going to go for the plan. It's currently a one versus one, but if he drives in, well, he'll get knocked right out. There you go, G2. A response after a timeout, but the game ahead of you is all to play for. Again, another flank that G2 had to worry about here, but in the end, they're able to recover it. And it seems like already spirits are quite high within G2 just after one round. That's the power of having a coach as, I guess, as respected and as collected as Ramalho and all the players on G2 looking forward to keep it up. What I did love is that there was instantly a response from G2 once one of their players went down. Immediately a refrag and a contestion and that's what you expect at a high tier game like this. Yeah, exactly. They hit pace. Now they've used their timeout obviously already. A lot of heat, a lot of a lot of bleeped words or quacked words as we yeah, done quacking. on the A stream earlier. Yeah? There was some quacking. <laughs> Uh, we need Ian Chambers, an expert now in quacking to cover the bleach. But T2, it's their first round of the series, first round of the game. They know the heat. The loser of this goes home. You have, as weird as it is to say, looking at, you know, an EU team and a Brazilian team, two favorites for the live stages. We have to say goodbye to one of them right now. Sorry to say, that's just the reality of the Inventational. You're among the best teams in the world. There's only one that can make it through. And maybe it's just a better team on the day. I mean, if we didn't want to eliminate teams, we should go back to round robin and play the entire thing out. There. <laughs> go for no, it. That's it's a very thing. long tournament. It's a very long tournament, but I'm just saying, if we don't want to eliminate teams, that's the only way to do so. It's just the reality of it. Someone has to go home of these two giant teams, giant organizations today. 20 team round robin. <laughs> <I'm gonna be> <laughs> <taking> weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Laundry again is going to be up. Now, last time we did see the entry come down about 22 seconds left on the clock with a 5v5 execute. And again, we do see that Liquid is completely on the side. They're just bunkering it down. They don't have to go upstairs. 
if you ask me, this is the biggest test for G2. It's the most difficult site to break for any attacker, and we know that every single attacking win round is incredibly important in the current meta. They're able to break this round. This might be that comeback that they require. Doesn't seem like Liquid want to try and step onto this fight anywhere else on the map. Two minutes, and they're more than happy to keep it as a sort of flat horizontal engagement. Ready and stepped up on the stairs, but with this being 100% opened, the play towards the Maverick, you can't really sit that aggressively without finding yourself caught and trapped later on. The busybody work is being done by G2, and thankfully much quicker than it was last time. Remember how late it was. They were paying attention towards the entrance onto blue, towards the utility that was buried around Pillar. Now they're doing it, I mean, at least a minute quicker. Aware of those Capcom traps to be on the side of E-Box, so that's going to be making this drop a little bit more difficult. As it's been placed on the angle, it's very difficult to get. I think Uno's trying to achieve uh, the destruction of those, that it can actually just jump in instantly after uh, and try and get that plan down on the default spot, whereas Doki is currently hiding inside of barrels. Now, he's hoping to be the little bit of a disruptive factor as soon as they do go for the drop, where he can strike them in the back as soon as they try and challenge for that drop. He's going to make the first bold swing here. They have the Banshee to scream on the entrance, but it doesn't quite get the catch, even though Nesk gets the kill on the back. A bit of width and wiggle room with the smoke canister, but Alamo locked out by the side of the barrels, and suddenly it's only Uno. Blinked and you missed it. Everybody caught off on that execute. Gets one to stop the flawless. But with 30 seconds left, finds a second. Canister sort of says, look, let's be honest, at this point it's all for stats. After they bounce back for the third round, this fourth one has just been shut out. That's what they say about the SAS shotgun. Believe in it and Believe. it will work. And that's exactly what happened Second in the spot. That, that was such incredible range out of the M59 or M590, but it works out. Uno, I mean, like you said, M, there's not much that you can do in the spot and it's the toughest sight. It's all right. But now you get to rotate to something else. The question is, how many rounds are you looking for on the attack here for G2? Because we start to have to think on the macro side yep. of the map. Two rounds attack, you're looking good. You're going to be able to play the same thing on the other side. That'll be the next question. But now what do you do on the next round? Look at the statistics overall over the tournament. It has been a 66% defensive. Uh, like map so far. So we are expecting to get like a 4-2 split for Liquid here. However, G2 over the game over the game that they have played here have found themselves with about 50% of their attacker rounds won. I still think if they manage to get a second attacking round here that they find themselves in some good water to go up against the rest of Liquid. I didn't. They're trying to get into Alamo's yeah, head. Yeah, that's what I was going to say as well. I mean, that's well. the thing, right? This is always the point, and it's always been a, a conversation piece about this team for as, as long as they've sort of had a head-to-head -head against Brazilian teams. Alamo left the region with, I'm not going to say burnt bridges, but a sassy walk at least to say, I'm going to EU and I'm going to be the best in the world from EU, and I'll be all of Brazil. And then Brazil had a... A sort of great bit of siege and then a bit of a dip and now is having some of the best siege setting records back-to-back -back major winners in the region so there's a bit of pressure on who is the IGL who you need to keep a cool head as much as Alamo and Romalio know the region the, re the region itself knows, knows them, them very very well and we know that Alamo is someone that to be very honest can tilt very easily if you can push him off yeah. the edge I think this for Uno is also quite important, right? Like the, the experience that's on the roster there kind of needs to, you know, start reeling him back in if things do go south or start taking over some of the responsibilities. Uh, because honestly, Romano right now cannot do anything anymore until Liquid call a timeout. So yeah. it's all down on the roster right now to try and keep themselves in and try and keep the momentum going for themselves. To make sure that there is no tilt coming into their roster, no shutdown in terms of communication. Quick breaking underneath, getting that reverse vertical control seeing if they can try and force the players out of the positions onto the site. A heavy stack onto it, the shield. And They're bunkered in! At least 60% of the team had discovered a home there, and they'll probably get forced out of there at some point. You look at the positions, though, and none of them are being moved as of yet. This is the probe from G2 to find the weakness. But they got MREs in there, Emmy. They're yeah. all ready to hold on, but this buck, that is a great solution to a potential problem. 
The thing is, though, as soon as they were on that Rome game, they got completely shut down by G2 quite effectively. G2 have been struggling against Liquid here as soon as they bunkered in. That's how they lost those three rounds. They bunkered in rounds where they cannot get through. So I totally understand Liquid deciding to just completely bring it in right here. Heavy take, Doki gets the first bite and one of the rare moments we've had an engagement not lead to immediate trade or at least chaos. Benja, at the bottom of Armoury, might not know about the loose player that's already on the far end. Nest is around the top of Armoury stairs, but he's going to quickly rotate his way back towards it as Doki does get caught in the double window. Alamau, he's going to try and scream his way up from underneath, but you're sort of wondering where the rest of the G2 players are. There's one outside the double window that's going to try and keep cover. Benj is able to get the take of his own as he's causing some chaos onto the game's window. The game's he's playing is trying to draw attention from Uno, going for the plant, but Virtue! Gets the lock to five versus four versus two. There's a quick cutoff on a rotate, and there is G2 getting their second. A bit slow to get Banja Master on the window here to cut off any rotations or power positions from the defenders. We know quick peeks through the doors when you're executing. You can't have too many people watching angles, but that specific window is incredibly important. And finally, when Benja got on there, getting one kill for the second, forcing the second down on the floor behind the pool table. That was exact, or the, the flipper table. I don't know what you call it at that point. Uh, foosball. The foosball, foosball table. Foosball. There you go. Having support through big window to follow up after it. Beautifully executed, oh, yeah, but that's, <laughs> that's G2 pulling it back. From, yes. from the edge. I agree, because Doki was too tunnel vision when he jumped in. He was looking over towards the players in pit, not knowing there was one in games in foosball. That actually downed him out there. That could have gone really wrong if it wasn't for Benja on that window uh, to shut them down right as the E when the E gets so many pings down. So it's a good recovery from G uh, G2, that's for sure. But that could have gone really wrong. A year ago, G2 did, I'm not going to say it was the impossible or the unthinkable as they did it and we thought it. They did the run in the lower bracket. They lost the very first game. So they're technically a step ahead as they were last time. And to get the championship, you got to beat everyone, including yourself, including your own demons, even if they are Brazil as a whole region. I mean, that has been the greatest end boss for every single team yeah. wanting to lift a trophy over the past three years. So yeah, yourself and every other Brazilian team. All right, we're back into dining. Last time, a uh, small tower, big entry point early on. Don't think there's anybody playing there right now from the site. No, there's no one playing there right now from Liquid. They realized as well that as soon as they went on for that little bit of a roam game, G2 again able to consistently find them, crush them, and basically make it into a very comfortable round for them. So they have decided to bunker down again, but this time in a different side. Extension into shower, which is of course the uh, all basic uh, uh, setup we saw when the rewalk just came through. We do have the Solace in the pocket of reset, something that we haven't seen as of yet. They're going to see if they can try and limit the Intel game because remember, G2, they found themselves within the site, and you can only do that if you know that you have a clear run through. They're trying to shut back against that drone game, forced G2 to play themselves a little bit more blind, a little bit more cautious, and a little bit more controllable. Yeah, Solus to get you the inf information, any drones or any sort of plants around, Oof. there's the first kill, going to Volps. But it's also important not just to hold things down with Amira and the Warden, but also to have some top floor control. And that's what Volps pr provides with his Valkyrie. Because now you can put that rest of the intel on your Amira and on the Solus. New interaction, if you're unaware, Hash can now break the back end of a mirror window as can any sort of ranged explosive. So you see a little bit of an uptick against holds like this. Volps does get caught. Benja watching the rotate round on the back, a little bit too thirsty for the fight itself. And they're just trying to shepherd a bit of room here. Push back against Liquid inside the shower and see if they can be the ones sitting pretty. But both of them go down in the middle of it, caught in a crossfire and suddenly T2 have the angles, the watch, and now the 3-3 half. <laughs> hey, they answer back. I love it. No, they have to, but they... <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, if they don't respond, right? Like, you, they bring it to you, you need to bring it back to them because otherwise, just that one side of the fair that might get into your head. And G2, they did what they needed to do. The 50% that they had an organ before an attack, well, they managed to put that one down again. A beautiful collapse from them. A Whoa. very tiny angle onto Volps out there. A beautiful hatch up from Benja. And G to lock it off three to three. Wait, <laughs> right, I want to hear. Holy shit! 
That's gonna be your reaction. Clip it and ship it, Salty. You got what you want today. I've never expected Benja to respond like that, Benja? by the way. <laughs> Benja getting eaten? Oh, everybody's eaten. If you've got Benja getting involved, yeah. honestly. He looks like such a composed young man, you know? He, the, <laughs> the rest of G2 have been an influence on him. But he was the point of question on the desk where they said, Absolutely. we need tournament groups, Benja, not yesterday, Benja. And he showed up, and this is starting to look more and more like the Benja from last year, which you know has been on sort of a flip-flop kind of moment through this year until we, we get here to SI, had it in groups. Hopefully we get it back here. But really, it's not like Liquid are gonna give up at this point. A 3-3 at the half with G2 on attack is already very good, but we know that Liquid are more than capable to answer back on the server. We're looking for this first round to build up that momentum. The biggest issue for Liquid has been to get that started don't really see too much play of Ella. You will get a bit of a call, and the gun, once upon a time, was the scariest gun yes, in the hands of the right player. It's obviously since fallen a little bit out of favor, but I guess it depends how they want to get the first break against the approach. There's Alamau actually getting it. Bolts. It's caught out, whether it was on the back of a Grismont or not. Look at the stretch here of the G2 players. They're about to be hunted by Ness, but there seems to be at least two or three of them where they've taken the hatch drop and got out of there. It does seem so. They've handed over the territory after getting their single kill, and that will leave Liquid with a lot more to clear, and it's going to take a lot more time out of them, which they cannot now do on the back of an EE1D. It's also the global operator gone offline, so no more EE1Ds coming through. They have the Grimbies, though, which could be used to have a bit of area denial or at least get information once it gets accessed, but it's not going to be the global uh, denial of movement that we were, are going to be having. So that's going to be helping G2 once the execute does come through. They don't have to worry about that scan coming in and having to stop dead in their tracks or be afraid of catching a bullet. And for OGs, they'll know the impact of Lion, what's had on the old, before they were G2. As Penta. shaking. Absolutely. That, that sort of moment does not fade away, and Liquid have shown over the years that they can definitely use and abuse whatever is put in front of them. Now you got extra Bs. Grim is going to be used also to pull G2 players out of position. I'm wondering if it will succeed, G2 could not pull it off on their attack. A minute left here, and we've heard the first sort of exchange of C4s and other pocket bits of utility, but we still have a lot for the pressure and the press on towards the site itself. It's a similar problem. And at this point, it's only really down to G2 to hand them the engagement. They're trying to get Time themselves to stacked up on top of the uh, E-Box hatch. Go for the Ninja! Slapped out of the server, resets. He's had a great tournament, great bits, and he's often been able to bite a couple of bodies back into rounds where things have gone away from Liquid. There's Alamau getting one, a little bit lost in the source there, Doki. Thought maybe he was under pressure, but as Alamau is able to get his third drop into the box, Whoa. is it an ace? Are we on for it? No. But he did more than enough to carry the team. I just thought, this is such someone else love. <laughs> I don't even think that was any of the players. There's just someone in the room. It could be Doki, it could be someone in the room. I don't know. Are you, <laughs> was you, it Anne? <laughs> <laughs> you thought Dark Zero SSG was entertaining, at least with the, the quips between the, the two teams. This is uh, starting to lift the bar a bit higher up. And Team Liquid respond with a timeout. They realize what's going on. They do not want it to slip away. And using the first round of attack as a probe to see, hey, can we do it or not? What's the failure? We can address that point and immediately react to it. It did feel like they were, you know, on that last round, a bit, like a bit punching in the, like trying to trying to find where could we go. But the fact is they didn't open up on the Shaika wall, for example, from Ebox. So it was just a blind drop in into two guns aiming there. Uh, they were walking into blue as well, but didn't really have a way to truly support the players going for that drop. And talking about the scary gun, you know, it has fallen off, but it's still very scary with the fire rate it has. If you can control that recoil, you're going to be ripping through everybody. Beautiful. How close is he to the ace? Oh, he swapped onto a secondary for them. Respect my hammer on my new motherfucker. It's a family show. I, I don't know. Respect my Ella. Okay. I'm not going to say anything else. No, all right. That's fair enough. It's weird for you to not swear on broadcast this week. <laughs> I haven't sworn yet this week. Oh, last right. week. Carter swore. Quite well. And then he swore. He said, holy bleep. As Parker really? once did, yeah. Attackers and it was, it was, it was, it was, it was a holy bleep moment. It was a holy bleep moment. Okay, but then enough. my follow-up was, you really are your father's son. 
because Parker did the exact <laughs> same call at one point. <laughs> Runs in the family. <laughs> Four to three. They to go. go up towards Dorms. We're on the back of a timeout. It was a bit back and forth, but then since three G2 rounds tied together in a row, Liquid need to break this momentum and fast. A different sort of setup. What we saw from Liquid when they were playing here in dorms is they're setting up more for, we're going to make sure that nobody comes up through attic and we'll put all of our resources towards that. In this case, it's more towards bedroom, which is the classic way where we see defenders and attackers kind of interacting. We do have Amaru on the board, though, and that means we are going to see some quick control coming in off T3, especially if they have information. However, Uno being live is going to feel reinforced right now. <laughs> yeah, Doesn't he's seem gone. like there were. And uh, yeah, we'll close it up. That means it's going to be safe. And uh, well, it's just hard breach gadgets from now on to open that up. Gives himself a route out for two stories. Uno is now in the basement. Trying to sit and wait and cause some problems elsewhere, Whoa! hoping maybe it's been droned and maybe he will not be droned. The Flores drones have been a consistent rollout. This time to try and get itself through the gates, cause some problems on anything on the other side of it as well. I think, is it immune if you activate it as yes, you jump through the you, gate? Mm -hmm. Yeah, beautiful. Basically only destroyable by an explosive, but that basically does the exact same thing if you destroy it by an explosive. It's true, but... Can they try and find the first pick here? It's something where this is where we've seen the liquid wheels fall off throughout this tournament. I mean, liquid, they they lost the first player and just could not find an answer to it in the last round. And G2 just kept going off a of pure extra manpower. But can liquid bring that back themselves, find that opening? The Amaru is going to be important for it. Going up to the top and tower, nobody found on there, but might be used to dive into kids' dorms to kind of help the assault on the side. Oh, Ness caught out an armory, a position he played as a Roma for a long time before, and Doki is able to double down and get himself set up inside Trophy. See if he can maybe find a second follow-on for the fight itself. Palu's putting the pressure from the back end, just gets a little bit of return fire, but they're still sort of fishing, probing, hoping to get a kill. Resets. He's moving in inside the back end, but Benja and Alamal get kills apiece, and he's suddenly locked out alone once again we find another player alone far and far away from the rest of the fight 50 seconds for Palu but you're thinking of this round on the back of a liquid timeout on liquid's map it's not going to do wonders for the mental no and, and Palu has been that player where if he's feeling the game he's really into it the, the motivation's up He'll be screaming, he'll be yelling, he'll be all red from excitement. And that's just not what we're getting in this round. Well, the round's still on, but uh, yeah, just quickly shouting swapping. back and forth. I mean, you got to get in their heads. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the round is still on. <laughs> <laughs> I, I tell you, as much as it is there easy... Is the end of the round. Yeah, as much as it is easy to get into Alamo's head and break him down, it's the same way for Paolo. And you need Paolo to play up. Lagonis is a great IGL, but if the players are just not in the zone with him, there's not much that you can do no matter who you are. I don't know what he was shouting very quickly, but I do have estimations. It's probably along the lines of what we've seen, which is come stop, out. stop baiting, stop stabbing, yeah. come fire. So going back to the uh, NA game that we had yesterday, um, you know, help your team, something along that line, because we got yeah. on a lot yesterday. But can help we talk your team, <laughs> NJR. We just had a tactical timeout, though, and it's a flawless round from G2 to respond to. That must hurt to your mental. Again, that was during the round. Yeah. About 30 seconds left. Let's go for loud call-outs there. Very, <laughs> Doki being respectful. I just like that that was it included. I'm sorry. I think Uno was trying to make a call at that point. It's like, He's you know, like, no, I'm sorry. You gotta talk about the actual game. Look, it's not done yet. You can talk all about what was happening in the hallway afterwards. But yeah, flawless round. Going back Five towards dining right now. And that must be painful. And I was looking at the last round as well. There's only the two hard breach gadgets they had available to them. So they couldn't even open up any of the walls if they wanted to. They did so with Attic, but then they had died everywhere else. And look at the way that G2 are defending. They're bringing, in my opinion, like the complete opposite in terms of operator lineup compared to what Liquid did on this very exact site. Liquid, they're bringing a Solus, they're bringing a Mira, they're bringing ops to lock things down. That's the game plan. G2, on the other hand, they're filling themselves. So they have the Warden to help them against flashes, oh. but they're just moving around. Uno already trying to get into people's heads. Will they try and lock him down on the doors? No, is the answer. Instead of getting themselves set up to try and find a fight, which he expected a little bit, they are draining it out. They're being cautious. They're double-checking everything, and that's 
getting the other players antsy for a fight. Virtue almost caught out. Maybe didn't know just how close Palu was, and he's a bit lucky to survive. So he gets that gun from the pockets of Dockerby. But didn't get the kill, didn't get the bite, so time will tell. It is worth remembering, obviously, that this round, the technical third round of dining, was the first round G2 won on their attack half. So there is still a lot of game ahead of us, potentially. Liquid, if they get this, it's still pretty much set up as a back and forth. It's also kind of bad side, 40% win rate so far for the defense. So the attack generally does take this one home. But that also means that G2 can make a statement here if they win this side and if they do it quite convincingly. Because if you're looking at Liquid right now, they're kind of pushing all over the place. We have someone in Big Tower, we have two people around Small Tower, we have someone around the Master Bedroom. They're looking to collapse all into a central point, but if you are getting the opportunities to go into these 1v1 fights and G2 does come out on top, well, that's bad news. And you can guess the game plan. You got Ram, you got Flores. You want to take control of the top floor, break into that, force G2 out of position, but G2 are bringing the ops that actually can oh. deal with that. Look at that run-up. First kill for Doki. I mean, he's looking at the double window for the second follow-up, where you've got Steel, Virtue, just holding down. He's not been pressured or threatened since the first engagement. Alamau swings on the resets on the bottom of White Stairs, a famous territory that G2 loves to rest control of. And now, as they just bury themselves on the back, lose out against Volps. Huge take from the range. They're still eyeing up the hatch. They still have 50 seconds, loads of time. They're concerned about this. The C4, if it's thrown well, could be maybe the end of this. He's, uh, I mean, we, in. we can see everything we can see. Benja, he's hoping to get a fight at the minute. Instead, sets it and blows it. Not yet. They hop out. They're going towards the small tower. Good to see the goo mines there that were thrown in. They'll slow you down, chip a damage. With gunfights that are going to go through walls, you need that extra bit of damage. They're going to go for a dining execute right now. So they rotate it around because kitchen is not going to be safe. However, Alamo inside of the showers, Benja inside of dining Whoa. together with Virtue is going to be a very hard hole to actually break through. They didn't really have anything for this. They're just going to try and muscle in through, but there's still all the reinforcements, all the defenses, oh, and all the players on that side. Liquid, a little bit of a panic buy environment there of we need to win this round, where do we go? Let's try somewhere else, but it sort of negates all the work because the verticality is great for a kitchen take, but doesn't really impact a dining execute. And it doesn't impact it when you have one person slipping through your back lines. There is nobody on flank watch, there were no drones also to cover white stairs, and that's how Doki can just walk up. And if anything, even if it was Doki, you know, getting one kill, it wouldn't have mattered that much if it weren't for the fact that there was no refrag immediately. He cost his opponents not just one kill, but up to 30 seconds of slowdown accounting for extra goo mines. Of course, that's also the case, but you're starting to think about it. It's like so much utility gets used to prepare yourself for kitchen. And what do you do in the last 20, 30 seconds? You rotate around to the small tower and you just hope for the best. <laughs> but everybody's located there, showers <laughs> and inside of dining. They knew that the rotate was coming due to information being out there. And they were just catching them as they walked into the small towers. So G2 really read that well and Liquid unable left. to make anything stick out there. You ask me. Liquid were playing super defensive on the Five defense, seconds. every single operator they're bringing, etc., all their lineups. G2 are bringing the exact opposite. Liquid are thinking, hey, it's defense. Why aren't they doing it? We're bringing the ops, but it's just not reactive. Another team, or maybe someone that's maybe in a clear, clearer mindset, would have seen, hey, they're bringing the complete different operators. We spot that in the early round droning. Maybe we should swap, swap ops to something more relevant. And here, I feel they've done it finally. Capital being brought up, that's going to be massive. Let's see if they can put it in a spin cycle tactically as well as on the site itself. But Doki is still that tactical problem as he's hiding out. No one really better suited for the roam in a lot of comparisons than a Solace who can pay this. Keen attention towards the drone. Do they know? Well, well, now they know. They'll have the idea of the reveal, but there's a lot of places you can go at this point. <laughs> it's a little bit of cat and mouse. <laughs> Happens to everyone. Finally gets the removal. They have some cover, but look at the pings coming out. The E1D Volps is getting the hot droned information, and there's Nesk with the pickup through the window. I think that was from the distance. Yeah, double window sprayed against. And gets the rotate round underneath. 
Not a lot of time wasted either by Doki here, so basically just gave away his life. And I mean, this is also a G2 did when Liquid went on the roam. They were very effective at clearing out those roamers, but then they struggled when they hit the site for the majority of those rounds. Whereas G2, while Liquid actually has been struggling to hit the site altogether, so taking out this first pick, uncontested, should be big for them. If there's one site you play turtle defense on Oregon, it's basement. And G2 flipped the script again. They lose Doki because they're thinking, hey, maybe we can get an early game pick. Solus, we can sacrifice it, but so it's going to be very important if we're still alive to kind of support into any sort of access into blue and into the hallway from there. A minute 20 separates Liquid from finding themselves hurtling towards map 2 on an 0-1 and on, the on their opponent's pick. Here, they've been able to wrest some control of the top two floors, but the fight is the site itself. And with some pressure coming down on the opposite end for the first time, generally, you've got Nesk pushing down onto Freezer. You've got some pressure around washing stairs as well. They're going to see if they can try and bait into the first engagement. The kit is rotating over to offer some support here. They're going to maybe see if they can utilize those Kappa Tower bolts, the cover of the smoke, to just charge in the back end. Again, a late rotate coming through. You saw all of them move towards the laundry. Now all of them are going towards the, uh, well, freezer through laundry right now. So they're not really sure what they're doing. And now the EUD comes in, they are going to execute. Here it is. The Kappa Tower bolts. Nesk starts to scream his way up. And then Virtue screams right back. Locked out with the spray across it. Virtue gets the double. There's Lagonis at least stemming the flow of all the bodies being red liquid here. Benja. He's trying to get the wide swing onto Laundry. Palu round on the back stairs, leaving just out of out. No, Palu pops off. A bit quieter, quieter on the other side. It's a little bit quieter. Quiet, eh? I mean, they also know, right? They're on a map, two map points behind now. If they were three behind, so they still need to be bringing it back. You cannot really afford to, you know, get aggressive uh, or, or start shouting back at them right now. Not until you're six six. The Capital was a great pick. Like I said, the E1D to lock players down. Yes, you lose two on the Execute. Virtue popping up, getting two kills on the Valk, but being able to clear Doki. Oh, okay. So uh, there it is. Now we could see yeah, it. I thought it was the window. window, but yeah, it makes Ten. sense. But in this position, you get the first clear, you hold on to the man advantage, and then you execute with the Capital to block out lines of sight that are also powerful in the basement, and you're good to go. You just you have the gunfight skills. We know that of Liquid. Nobody takes that away from any team that is here at the Invitational. But to execute the timing properly, they showed that they can. And Basement is a tough nut to crack. They got to do it again. Yeah, again, they are going to be playing in that basement. And now the big question is, are they going to be putting someone on the roam? Or are they going to be playing it in that turtle kind of setup? And, you know, for now, you see a lot of people rotating around. But it's just to put those barricades down, just to slow them down a little bit more, just to get a bit of information as well. Because those being opened up, that makes noise. The one thing that highlights the response here more than anything is Uno. Off of the other, off of the Scorpion. It's not about respecting it, it's about respecting Volps' Capital game. They are able to utilize the Wamai discs, maybe take away from the pressure onto the bolts itself, which was the last execute. If they do not have those smokes, those fires, where they wanted them, maybe G2 would have felt a little bit more confident to hold some positions and not be caught out by the width of the swings. The drones will still go for the full map clear. You can never truly trust that G2 is entirely back on the side. There are yellow pings towards, I think, one player that's Benja, yeah, just holding the top of these stairs, but Volps has to make noise. Benja will hear that and know that they're coming for him. One thing that I noticed yesterday, I think, it was uh, a matchup with Team Liquid when playing Dark Zero, I think. An EMP would come out at the right moment to disable the Warden that helps with the Execute. And I'm wondering if this is going to be the lesson that Liquid have learned to be able to crack this nut again. EMP down, disable the Warden, flash in, use your smokes with the Capital, and then drop onto site. WP being used to open up the hatch, gonna make sure that there is no trickery going on with the Electro Cloth from Benja. Not that he was trying, but you can never be too careful with those kind of cloths to come through. You do not want to lose the limits of Heartbreach you have. And as they are rotating through, the pressure is again coming down from multiple different angles, this time blue, laundry, and freezer. They really want this first engagement to go their way here, G2, but Liquid probably want in a little bit more. They're being so cautious. The Kai to play against the chance at the burn here. They have one EMP left. They're going to roll it first. That will be perfectly timed. Very, very good combo there of utility. They knew what to expect, but they have to draw on it or not. Liquid, they're making sure that everything is done in a step that is together. Something that has been missing from some of their play throughout this tournament. It's occasionally turned into the Nest Show or the Palu Show, or even occasionally at the side episodes of the others. It's great to see them all operating at the same level.
Hatches alone are not enough to dive into the site. Remember, you need some players to kind of distract from the backside in a big tower or go off into freezer or maybe even from construction. Not the case here so far for Liquid, but they're still in the setup. And bees are all over the place. The bees were caught by the discs and they're probably happy it's those, but the smoke canisters, this will buy them a lot of time here. Very well lined up, very well placed onto the back end and they oh. still have. Oh. At least one, the removal of a C4. That is the level of gun skill we're playing with here, but with 30 seconds, it's time for this to turn on. We have the smoke cover towards the back. The players forced out Nesk with the drive up where Parley got the triple, but they're going for the plant. In the meantime, it's a five versus three. Lagones, will he stick it? Well, he's got the perfect cover too. Doesn't find it. Just drop cold, 15 seconds and the two versus two, Liquid. They recollect, dive all the way to the hard wall as the remaining G2 players double up, but it's all in a bulletproof on the right-hand side. They go either side. They win out the first fight. There's the second. G2, Clay Morrigan from Liquid. Beautifully played by them there in the end. You saw them trying to make sure that their execute would stick. The bees coming through, the fire there as well, but the smoke canisters just making sure that there was the opportunity for G2 to move back in, especially with that bulletproof being out there as well. Perfect information being fed through. Well, we will throw to a quick break before we're back with the desk to break that down.
Liquid pick, Oregon is taken by G2. And if Liquid don't drip drop out of this, well, they could drip drop out of this if they don't fix some leaks. Am I right, Fresh? Yeah, it's uh, been pretty pretty difficult for Liquid, I think. Um, they they took a gamble, I think. Mm. Honestly, going to Oregon, G2 will have sat and watched that today. And like I said, G2, they chose attack, which was a big risk. It was a calculated risk for me, but they achieved that 3-3 split, which, to be honest, was absolutely incredible. The first three or four rounds, they didn't really look in control of the fixture, um, but they got rounds five and six, and that was crucial. Yeah, when we head into round five, Liquid decides for some reason to turtle up. I don't understand why they decided to turtle up because it was two minutes left and they had already gotten themselves to the positions where basically the game ends. And you, they shouldn't be there two minutes left of the round. They need to spread out. And then after that, for some reason, they decide to go kitchen dining off the bomb sites. We looked up statistics for kitchen dining and yep. top floor win rates during the entire event. Top floor has a 67% win rate, which means you win two out of three. Kitchen dining is down to 29. That is not a great gamble to take. And I don't understand why Liquid would take that gamble. And it just keeps getting worse because, I don't know, their attacks were terrible. Yeah. And, and that's the problem, right, is if G2 have gone for this calculated gamble, we'll go attack first in a defender side in meta, and then Liquid, you know, play a bad strat round five, and then play an even worse site round six. They give G2 that free free split. They let G2 have that confidence. We've spoke about G2 potentially, you know, having this mental block against Brazilian opponents. They gave them all the confidence they needed in the world to go on. G2 coming into yesterday were literally the top attacking, uh, top defensive team in the tournament. Free free split on Oregon, defending Oregon against the worst attacking team. It was only ever going to go one way after that. Yeah, I mean, just look at round nine. They did they get flanked up white stairs by Doki? who kills one of their players in the middle of Trophy, and or he's in the door to Trophy, and just when that kills goes down, everything just erupts into a mess. Then Liquid, is, for some reason, decides with 25 seconds left to rotate Small Tower that they should have taken the first seconds of the round. Because you can just set one guy in Small Tower, he sits in the way there, then you take top floor. But we're just seeing a mess of attacks that I honestly, I did not enjoy watching. I mean, one thing you definitely will have enjoyed watching, because you wanted to see it, you said it in the pre-map, that you wanted to see Benja pop off. Yeah. He showed up, didn't he, Fab? He really showed off, and that's what we expect of him. He is a big game player. He showed that over and over and over again, and he had a phenomenal performance. It was nothing like the Benny we saw yesterday. Yeah, and I think that was the big thing. That, that's what we came in, you know, when we did the pre-game. Pre we said, yeah, Benja Master was great in groups. Dropped off yesterday against FaZe, but he is one of the top players in the world. He can have a massive performance. MVP P map one, that's exactly what we wanted to see from him coming into this map. Is he the sort of player that once that, that fuse is lit, he really starts to start gunning? Benya has a Nordic mentality, just like we did in the old team when we, when we were playing. He keeps calm no matter what. Like he gets in, up in some sort of, well, I would say it's like enjoyment when things are going well for him, but it's not like he will overreact on emotions and let them get the best of him. He's a calm player. He will keep calm even when he's struggling. Maybe he'll get a bit flustered, but that's about it. No matter how well he does, he's just going to keep going. On the flip side, Fresh, what happened on Liquid's attacks? I honestly think they lacked control. I think, yep. you know, they, they take a few risks. Uh, Lagonis spoke about it earlier when we interviewed him after the Falcons game. And he said, yeah, we make mistakes. We lacked control. The coordination, the communication wasn't there. And that was just so amplified today. Like Fabian said, that round nine in particular, where there's a player just flanking up white stairs and then walks all the way, uh, but gets to big window. I think it was Doki. Yeah. They had no idea. They had no control. They had no uh, drones. Uh, they even had a guy outside the yeah. window. So there's a guy outside the window. There's no drones. There's no flank coverage. All of that shouldn't happen at this level of play. Whatever's going on with Liquid's attack, we're continuing to see it. Do you think that how much is pressure playing a part here with Liquid, do you think? Because there's so much on the line. You know, we, we, keep, we can't say it enough. Not only do the fans want them there in this you know, live arena environment, they need that, they want that. I mean, they need to be there. To a certain extent, they're playing for their country, you know? Like, everyone loves them. But the pressure seems to be getting the better of them because all these attacks, the numbers just linking up that their attacks are poor, they cannot afford themselves to lose. I don't think they can lose more than one defense because if they do, they are in for like a really bad time because yeah. it just looks disjointed. There seems to be communication issues, communication errors, just ba basic things that I learned back in year two just seems to not be there. And I don't, 
I, I, I don't understand how they can't be, because the experience they have behind their players, their in-game leader, which is Lagonis, yeah. together with Alema, who's the in-game leader for G2, they were people that created this method. They were the guys back in Team 1 that created the way we play it today. I don't think Legonis or any of the other players in that team, especially like Nask and Paolo with all their experience, they they need to have a higher standard, higher expectation on themselves and their teammates to not let these things through. I genuinely just wonder, are they a little bit too far gone at this point? Has the repeated failure yeah. at international events, I'm not saying the relative failure, the, the big ones, letting international events get past them, mean that they're too far gone. Yeah. Um, and, you know, this is the high pressure situation. They can't lose a map in this series now, and they can't lose another game if they want to achieve their goal. It's the sort of tournament you want to roll into with, you know, previous momentum and previous success, isn't it? The amount of times I've stood on a stage with Palu, you know, moments before a, a final, an international event, and he said, this is the time, this is our time, and it just it doesn't ever seem to click for them. If they can somehow pick it up here, and they've got a tough job ahead of them, Consulate, G2's map pick next. Uh, Fresh, both teams like this map. Yeah, both teams absolutely you know, love this map. Um, I said it at the initial ban phases, all three maps we're playing, these teams have a high preference. Now, Consulate itself, G2 have only ever lost against W7M, but Liquid have only ever beaten it against W7M. So if we're using W7M as a parameter, like I say, both teams will feel confident going into it. Now, in you know, in theory, G2 will be starting attack, and I think you said it, Fabian. If Liquid are going to have any success, they need to be punishing these defenses. Yeah. All right. Well, we've got to jump in. G2, Liquid. This is a treat for all of you at home. We are moving into map two. It might not be the last. Fluke, Hap, and Big Popper Siege himself are ready for you. Big Papa Siege. I'm 30 years old. What are you talking about? <laughs> Big Papa Siege. It's like I'm from the Jurassic era. The I am Jurassic though, to be era. fair, to be fair. Yeah. When I was a caster, it was a Jurassic era. Fabian was actually winning all the time back then. Yeah. That's how long ago uh, it was. Fabian catching four. strays. I casted him losing on oh, this map, oh, oh. so. I know why Fabian's catching strays. Why? Because uh, of a story you just shared before we went live about clothing. Yeah, so for those that don't know, uh, I am a good friend. A and very good friend. So I lent Fabian my wonderful white linen pants for him to use. I won't say I also lent him the underwear, but you know, every now and then, you know, you gotta help a friend. Yeah. So uh, he ends up kind of returning the favor by uh, rolling his pen over my white linen pants. <sighs> It is a black felt tip pen. A disaster. A disaster. He owes you a hammer. He owes you a hammer. Absolutely. Absolutely. I have one, actually. My friend gave, made me oh, a hammer. That's nice. Yeah. That's cute. I don't. Well, I have a regular hammer for, like, hitting nails. Yeah, but he, he like, is a, apparently a blacksmith. I didn't know. Oh. He trained for a year to make it for me. That's great. That's very kind of you. I have incredible I friends. Okay, you do have incredible friends. <laughs> I don't. I can name a single blacksmith friend I have, let alone one who would make me something. <laughs> be the friend you you to want to fair, have, Emmy. I'm actually very lucky. There's some very great creators in the community that have like gifted me things over the years, and I feel horrible because I'm like, all I do is shout, <laughs> and they're like, I've made this like it's prisma, like, like like from Andon, I got this like prisma, uh -huh. and they were like, here you go, and I'm like, I feel like I owe you like my life or a lot of money for this. And they're like, nah, it's cool. I'm you, like, you give the gift of happiness. I give the I mean, gift of shouting. We have the gift of an incredible map too. Map one was, I would say, kind of close, but still, you could see those flaws in Liquid's kind of play in general. I loved G2 with Ramalho calling the timeout and then pulling the team back from it. Didn't Super work out early. for Liquid. Yeah, it was beautifully done. Super early. That's the experience. So many teams do not even use it. But console is a different piece with the amount of rooms in here. I think we throw our minds back here ah! to old, old man Milos. Papa, Papa Milos. It was Atlantic City, New Jersey. Not a great <laughs> state to be in. I was perched up there with Emzo and we screamed. We screamed. We violence. screamed, I tell you. And then uh, Fabian died <laughs> to the lion. Like it what? is. I, oh, for those, I'll be back! <laughs> for those who are new to Comp Seed Consulate, well, it was a very different map. It's yes. very hard to compare how it was to how it is, because this, this map is like two and a half consulates compared to old consulate. Absolutely. But there is a history there. There is a sort of a, a title towards two teams where, to be fair, very, very, very different G2 roster. Pretty different Liquid roster. A couple of similarities of the Core 3, but otherwise, the punch and the fight is at the front that 
pocket EMP. A very quick breach here onto the wall. Parley was not going to try and roll and double trick that because he just assumes it will get opened anyway. Yeah, good to uh, to just run away there. I think if he would have stuck around, he might have actually found himself uh, shot right through that first breach that went through. But we are playing exposition, and that means that the top four is going to be quite important. And there is actually some acknowledgement of that from Liquid. There's a very heavy roam going on here as uh, Ness playing on that also famous vendor uh, machine corridor behind the shield out there. We saw that in our previous game as well. Difficult to take care of. A little bit of hot droning coming in there for Doki. He wanted to try and move all the way behind it. This is that no man's land. It's a very long, very narrow, very dangerous point to play against this shield. How do you get rid of it? Well, there's several different ways. Bees aren't the step in. That's just to force the space to vault. It's going to be creating some opportunity there to uh, actually take the direct area above the map, but it is not going to be beside itself yet as Ness finds himself Whoop. into a bit of a fight. He's leading back in and out. Oh! oh! Fade away. That's the entry out there for the side of Liquid. It happens. Sometimes you go to step into a fight in that engagement, but T2's making sure that they can try and keep the pressure hot. They forced the player and lost the body because of it. The IQ is gone. And that can obviously offer you great benefits as the game goes into its sort of deeper state with the Valkyrie cameras, with the position of everything against it already. You can assume they have a bit of a read. Remember, what they're taking here isn't the side itself. It's the sort of pressure against it, the force of the play. There's a bit of punishment. Nesk had the entire read on Doki. It doesn't matter if an E1D pops off if you're stationary. You, you still have Fendrir on the board here. Lagonis can isolate the site in any entry, support his teammates. But if Ness is just going to pop up and get kills, then you're going to be comfortable regardless. So let's remember, this map, even if it's in its old format as it is currently nowadays, it has been the playground of Nesk and will continue to be, to be the case. You have to respect his positioning, and Alamo is going to try to flank and play it against their defender in play. I mean, they know exactly where he is. They got Benja Master in the second as well. Virtue on a roof, waiting, flashing down, but again, really on this take. They weren't anywhere near. The site itself finds one. The second finds him. Liquid wants to again get this opening round. Beautiful played. I mean, what, what can we say here, Hap? This is just Liquid locking down the top floor. Yeah, also a lack of information from G2 there. You saw with the second kill that came through, of course, the first one, beautiful fade away that we saw, but after that, just walking in, not having any idea of the person, that, uh, person that's playing on the close corner, not knowing of the AFNAT being on the corner, uh, you know, on the floor as well. Just, just finding yourself being picked up, this is what I mean. Nask finding that kill, and then Palu picking up someone that just walks right through the AFNATs. A lack of information out there. I have to say, a lack of information, yes. That's, but I think it all started with not being able to tackle Nesk on Soda Machine. It is a power position. There's quite a few of them on Consulate with this modern rendition. Yep. You have to clear those out. I understand it's a lot to work through, but that power position allows you to control the entire hallway and have multiple ways to access the site from either angle. will give you less pressure, of course, on that balcony doorway. It's a power position was not tackled with only one player there immediately eliminated that was for me that early game inflection point it was an interesting brawl as well when you're looking at that sort of piano expo site you generally don't see it turn into such a fight around admin sure there is a vertical to play against there is a tension that needs to be paid towards these positions but usually not with as much dedication the defenders of liquid didn't really want to give it up without the fight and at least taking a body on two on their way out the door. Here, well, it's always going to be a brawl. You're looking for this top floor take. There's only really one or two ways to get your way in, whether it's a top yellow sort of structure, a quick plant and play, which might happen when you're looking at who Alamau is and what's in his pocket, already putting pressure onto the cubby window. We've seen this fail and then succeed earlier on today. And you assume it's going to turn into a juggling match against the smoke. That was quite literally just bashing your head against the wall. They did try it three times before they finally managed to succeed out there. But a lot of information is being gained right now about the actual site itself. They have the opportunity to see if it is going to be clear or not. And I believe there is just the hopping going through. But that's Alamo down on the ground floor below, though. So he might be eyeing up a hatch instead uh, rather than the window on the direct site. Uh, it's a fun little push up and plant. It was a play that was done on the old consulate as well. Just tucking in on a couple of different sites where the kit and where the plants would lie together. The bees force a little bit more space. Alamau is on the ground, but he can obviously be in that window in a second. There's no E1Ds or calls to cover the audio, but there is a supernova on the side of Doki. In 
and out. Wanted to bait the utility there. The C4s or anything else that might make it happen. The vertical. There's a bit of damage on the cover. There's to pick back up a Benja. The Buck getting some of this quick work done. Just sees the side of the next engagement, but doesn't quite get the full taste. The reset who is living on a sliver and a dream. Alamau. He's still in. He's still out. He's still trying to play against that exact intel. It is... Imagine you're going for the plant on the bottom of bank, but it's a much longer way rather than just dipping in and dipping out. The cover's important, but Benja gets the kill, and Uno just puts bodies in and causes a war crime. There's Whoa. one and two, though. Three, two, one. Lagonis. All that's left, he cannot quite get into the stopping position in time. He might be able to get the first fight just on its nature, but no, Alamau slips out. I mean, he's going to have to go outside at some point to actually try and get that one that's on the repel. And as he walks up the staircase, gets shot from behind, actually finds two at the same time. Good clear down from G2. They lost the entry kill. Alamo was also just going in, out, in, out, and then eventually decided to stick it. There was no utility being tossed this way. He was just afraid and trying to bait for someone to just swing into the angle. So this strategy, especially knowing that it's Alamo, IGL, and Ramalio as coach for G2, uh, makes my old brain tickle a bit because... <laughs> I think you should get a check. Yeah, I, <laughs> because I have to... A few neurons have fired up here because this is exactly what Liquid and generally LATAM Brazilian teams used to do in the past. What I reference, this is a specific bait strategy that used to be employed, especially between two Brazilian teams. We're talking almost four years ago, if not a bit earlier than that. Because teams will go in, bait once, pull back, bait twice, three times, and sometimes even run out of time because they ended up baiting the plant so many times. And now that you see this old husk of a strategy being pulled back, but with a crucial piece. Of course, you got Gara hooks that could be used. They immediately pull you into the site. You got players to support you on the windows, the positioning from the ash on the rotation, the buck downstairs also to clear out. When you play that vertical play, there's so many moving parts to make the strategy work. Don't think that it's just the Gara hook to go in for a plan. For a true trip down memory lane, do you, I mean, you both will remember uh, the old way to clear yellow stairs. At some point, we had the 10 flashbangs and yes. four grenades being tossed Absolutely. in. Absolutely. And a just the guy sitting there and he's like, Yep, there's so many indicators around me. I'm dead. This is <laughs> fine. <laughs> this is fine. Yeah, yellow, it was the corner uh, of every hold, really. It was that sort of backline pillar. And now it has more structure to it. It's a little bit safer to hot drop into it because of the wall, which is why the wall behind it is often opened up, just so they feel a little bit more skeptical. Talking of, Bender is skeptical of Volp's ability to live. Gets them off on the very opening pick there. They're concerned about Nesk on a run out. Oh, look at this. There he is. Doesn't believe he's alive. Very early <laughs> over the top floor. Nesk now trying to find a bit of uh, early engagement outside the window as well, outside Visa door, but he's being chased down by Benjo. I think they're fully aware of his position out here. How do you deal with them? You need intel, and Benja is on the route also. We talked about earlier today how powerful Buck is as that entry up, and they'll at least be able to push Ness for a moment, but he's trapped now. Oh, solo in this visa check. Can he get the kill? No, he cannot. Good clear from Doki. I mean, you hit the procs at that point, but they know there's a second player. Palu does get Benja. Stops it being an entirely one-sided show at this moment in time, and drifts deadly and cautiously upwards. Gets himself up towards Spiral to find a new location. The thing is, right, we've seen so many attempted executes onto this garage floor, and every single time we see them kind of run out of time. They run out of manpower to truly get themselves into an advantage where they can actually continue their trade game onwards. G2 now do have an effective 4v2 advantage on the site, with Palo still upstairs. So they have to pay attention to him. They cannot just go for an execute without respecting him but they can actually make it stick and then have to transition back to his uh, position. You do have Alamau on flank watch, which is something that could be used if he's actually paying attention, but not to the vertical, not to where Palu is. This is an older strategy also. You have someone that's playing a triple vertical where he's all the way up and can just watch you all the way down, and that's that flank watch gone off the server. Yeah, flank watch wasn't watching the flank. Irony is abound, but so is Doki, leaping and abounding towards the side itself. Uno on the rotate round with the kit on towards Spy. He will find an engagement first. Lagonis is a bit off to his shoulder, but Doki's going to sort of try and pull them out of position. Second for the round. Palu, he's back to the site with only 30 seconds left, though. He's removed from the site. Lagonis watching, waiting at the back. Just needs to stop the kit. And because of that, well, G2's pulled themselves away. They're opening up the hatch drop. They're going to make sure that they can attack this all together as close as possible. Why go wide? 
when you offer the risk. They're inside, they're having a scrappy fight that Virtue logs out. Get the bleep off me. We need a like we need a button. We can actually press Absolutely. That. <laughs> Is there a swear jar? <laughs> Well, we did used to have one. We did. If Fabian filled it within like a it's day. It's Fabian joined the evil desk. Diane. I'm sorry. Get off your high horse, Hap. I've heard your cast. Yeah, but there wasn't a swear jar back then. There wasn't. That's true. <laughs> he That's just true. did it. The I moment we it. introduced it, it was just Derry and Fabian that were putting up. Look at that clear. <laughs> Sounds so cool. <laughs> <laughs> They're like re I thought that was like, like Pac-Man. That, that was great. <laughs> This is beautifully played. You have one player, the buck in this case, who's putting pressure on one side. There's no way to cut them off from the from the hallway. The castle has already left the position. Doki walks in, gets the kill, gets the clear. This round is off the back as his kills. Exposition is up next again. They've managed to take that one before, but th th that was a strange round where G2 went for a full top control from the side of Agni, couldn't really get through on the no man's land vending machine hallway. But at the Five same time, left. also on the opposite side near yellow, didn't have the right information, got themselves stuck by players around yeah, corners or the Afnats that basically rendered them useless in those fights. So G2 need to change that. Again, we're seeing a very heavy hold from Liquid up top. It's just the Gonis that's currently inside the side. He's using the Afnat to stop the quick entry into the side, at least for now, so he doesn't get surprised by a rush. But I'm wondering if G2 is actually realizing this and actually going for a full horizontal, what it seems to be right now. Now, I'm not entirely sure because I know there was a little bit of a, a, a change in a back and forth in some of the graphics of who the winner of this would go up against. If it's the game that's currently in play on the other screen, which is Bliss Wolves, or if it's one of the ones that was already sorted on, that is obviously tomorrow. So there's still games in hand, but they get through those and they'll find themselves in. Depending on that opponent, this is the end of today and one more for the break, G2. They're getting the break themselves. A very different take, a very opposite-ended take. They're up on the windows, a console. They're getting the break onto the back of Piano Door instead. We talk about how Yellow Stairs was a focus of takes and approaches last time. Well, look at this. The fight is over the top, but it's reset, locking out Virtue. And this is the problem with not taking the top floor. It's so difficult to vacate any defenders from up here, but it might be necessary. You have Alamo in a power position that can lock down rotation between the two sides. However, with two players, three actually, from the defense upstairs, this is proven tough. They have all the watch. It's shooting G2 branded fish in a barrel here. Five to two. Doki and Uno looking at, well, just a room where all their friends have died. They have no control over any of the verticality. They haven't been able to break and move any of the visuals either, and there's nothing to give them that. No smokes, no coverage, really. Uno does find a kill. Uno finds, well, Doki gets one and then a death. Uno has to now find three more. Volps has taken a bit of damage, but when you're looking at... I try and drive here through. All of the players are above. I mean, not even Splinter Cell himself could find the sneaky route here. Mr. Cell. Mr. Cell. Mr. And Fisher. We, we are looking at that macro now for, for a moment here. If, you, if, you'll, if you'll allow me the time, just because two rounds on the attacker are already a minimum that we look to not just on consoles, but in general in a current metagame. Liquid locking this down means that they have understood that G2 are going to take their time, but taking so much time that you can't really do much about clearing the top floor. There's a lot to do on this console. For those that haven't played this new console, there it is. They haven't played it. I mean, hello, you should probably do it because it's actually quite an entertaining <laughs> game. Do it. But, but it does play very differently. You have so many rooms to clear. It is... It's like virtually bigger than what it was just because of those added extra walls. And you got to worry about that. You got to worry about the top floor and the vertical play. So we saw G2 in one round go all the way up top. And then we saw them all go horizontal, except for like one that was still out there. They haven't really been able to find that good uh, bit of balance around exposition. But they've been able to be very convincing in the other two sides they have attacked so far. So that is probably what they're banking on right here. It's okay to lose exposition as long as you can win console, as long as you can win garage as confidently as they did. Did you look up who they play next if they win? As Wolves or Bliss, depending on who. Okay, so it was, it was the other one. I remember there was a little bit of conversation about the bracket flip. Then, to be honest, I couldn't remember. I mean, I went to Liquipedia and checked. So yeah, I mean, that's the best way of doing it. My, Usually we just hear... I don't have any streaming. electronics. I don't have any connection to the internet on me. I like to live in the moment. 
10 seconds left. I, do you know what I'm excited for actually when I do get my phone back? People are gonna what? be like, oh my god, she doesn't, know Tom, she doesn't know Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell is, is Sam Fisher. Fisher. It's like, no, Attackers I say these things to irritate the, the people around me. I'm gonna start calling him Zero and only Zero. You know, you're very good at that irritating thing. Zero, thing zero. Yeah. zero, Zero. <laughs> Well, might as well reset this counter back to 0-0. Zero, zero. We got 2-2 two, two on the line here in G2 and Team Liquid. And still, a powerful defense from Liquid. Now they're getting more aggressive. The Pulse bringing out. What is this, year two? What is this, year two? I don't know. <laughs> what a line, I mean. What <laughs> line? We're about to see if they can try and make it a little bit more reminiscent of that fight. The run out on the door is more of a run out into the door. Doki does get the first re. Rotate him. Volps off Surveying. towards the back end. I was going to say resets might be offering some support, but he is actually on an entirely different read on the floor. I was looking down at the top down. Palu is in fact the one who is not too far away. The call back to back. Alam out. Safety first is the name of the game as they ensure that, well, anyone with electronics on them is going to be sniffed out and dropped down. They have vertical control, but they still have a whole story separating them from Actually getting the fight. And look at this. Remember last time Liquid, they were all over the building. They were really stretching their legs. There was only really two of them that sort of sat down and stayed there the whole time. This time they want it to be deep. Yeah, we're not going to have any of that Rome game on right now as everybody's fallen back. So if the Rome clear is good enough from G2 to realize that soon, and that means that from the next minute 15 onwards, you know, that timer, uh, they're going to be starting to pressure down towards the side. They're going to start make sure that they are eliminating the angles that these defenders can play on, whilst also sending some people towards the basement so they can actually play in a horizontal manner as well. That Nitro cell just delayed out there from Volps. Hatch will open up either way. Nothing to be found. And that's the issue with running the pulse. I know we made the joke haha year two, but running the pulse as your, your only remaining Nitro cell in this case is a lot of things to juggle for one player in a site that relies so much on verticality from the bottom Reach. up. So now you don't really have answers other than slowing your opponents down with a lesion, which is a sound strategy, but you have to answer back with something other than just, hey, I'm just kind of in the way. All nine players alive in 40 seconds. It's going to be a punch that is going to echo probably around every single liquid player as soon as they get the first angle of a fist through a wall on the side itself. Still clearing castles and still trying to get a blind, but they had the read here on the rotate. Resets does find Uno. Doki is being surrounded. Look at the aggressive retake. Wins one, can't get both. Palu trying to pinch their way up and get the cover on the hatch. If they win this control, then there is really no way for G2 to get a comfortable plant in at this point. They have to decide very quick. What do we do? Go for the site, go for the play, and hope the cover comes together. That seems to be the A road, and that seems to be the one that they go back against. Oh, no! Benja takes the head off for one. There goes the remaining two. Tragedy has struck. The script. Well, actually, I, I mean, I don't write that, but to be fair, if there is a script... It's very good writing, I if, tell you. If there's a script, we're going to map three. And if that is the case, then that's actually poor writing. I mean, who relies on something like that? Come on. All right, so... <laughs> before we even tell the script writers too much, really. <laughs> we're not allowed to say much. We're not allowed no, we, we cannot really give away the hand that we have written here. So. It was just on the hat. Can I have the Benji Master Virtue moment again? Because that was he was just on the hatch. I mean, they're all smiles, mistakes happen, but... I, mean, I, I guess they know is. Okay. No, what? <laughs> what? That must have been like an issue in comms where he said like, yeah, I'm like, I'm downstairs Yeah, shoot me. What? No, no, no. It must, it must have been like I've dropped or whilst he was dropping. And then he's like, what the hell? It's like, I don't know. Like, I cannot think of another way. I mean, at that point, all you can do is smile and move on. They, Absolutely. They're a map on. They are still obviously, you know, on, on the opposite end of this. If they get a 3-3 half, that's pretty great. That's obviously where we found ourselves on the other turn of the half before they then turned it up. Liquid struggled with the ladder play and struggled with getting themselves, you know, properly put into the game of Oregon. And here, Liquid on their attack might find themselves on similar struggles. G2 are well aware of it, which is why they're all smiles. They don't see a cause for concern as of yet. We'll get ourselves towards the third 
Scythe, and again, maybe a three versus three. The quick break on the single wall will come together. There's not a bandit trick against it this time. But, no. Well, there's a burn through it, and almost a trick on the bandit. Yeah, but I think that was right through the opening of the uh, the Maverick out there, instantly firing through, almost uh, losing his life out there. That would have been huge if you could have picked up Lagonas that way. That would have been a Nitro gone. It would have been an, uh, a good player out of the way as well but they weren't able to find it. And if we look at the rest of the setup of Liquid, now there's a very heavy presence towards the side of Admin as well, oh, with that... the opportunity to fall back towards Vending. Uh, it's not a complete break. You can just see the line of it. I think it's at the bottom middle. Yeah. There it is, Doki. Gets it clear, they have a C4. It's a little bit of a slower approach. Last time they just smashed the wall open with a Selma, if I recall correctly. And here, they're going for a more direct take, and that's something that could be played against. You've still got three smokes, a couple of C4s, everything to try and take away from the range of it. The first gets tossed and shot right out. Clay pigeon shooting is a practice hobby of both these two teams. Now, what do you do to clear the player on Soda Machine? Let's remember, this was the power position that gave Liquid the advantage on the round where this was played, where the site was played last. You bring in the big change in the Maverick, you give yourself more oh. flex on the other side, but Nesk is still around, baby, here on the server. Beautiful clean headshot. He knew put Nesk in a shootout, and he's going to have a pretty good time every time. Here is a pressure from underneath the buck of Volps. Well, the buck towards Volps, even, Ooh. is locked out. Alamau. Gets his first for the map as well. It's an important part. A bit of confidence for the IGL to start really cooking into this game. He was one of two at the start of last round, and it was Lagonis who got the two that ended the previous one. So if he can replicate some of that and get the drive here, we might see a little bit of a different result. The roll of the grenades, the pressure of the smoke. Ness goes low. That second one, not quite enough, obviously. But that sure is bullets. However, there's a player sneaking up round on the back. Again. It is Lagonis. There's one. Caught out on the drone, 30 seconds, and now they've got the decision. Do we try and focus on who's behind us, or do we try and push for what is in front? Virtue on the roof, still watching and waiting to see if they can catch this loose player, but he's moving slowly. It's the pressure now, a two versus two in this position. Uno tries to plant, but nothing is allowed. Takes a huge bit of damage. There's at least their engagement, a three versus one, but they've still got to try and put the kit down. Resets, he can do a hero play. He knows where the default is. They don't need to! That was so close! But Benja! Redemption! Oh, Redemption. <laughs> that is redemption for the last round. The team kill doesn't matter anymore, I would say at least. Second time though, the flank comes through. We saw it in round five where Palo was able to just come up, go back down towards the yellow stairs and then shut down the plant in the end. We see it here from a different player this time. Again, finding that one kill onto Alamau, really throwing his banner in the works out there. But luckily this time they were able to bring it back because it's like that's one of sides. Let's hold them off before he rotates back and the rest executes the side. However, same major issue had happened before. G2 could not deal with Nesk and Soda Machine. And that is a power spot that they couldn't clear out. However, it's actually the perfect time to fail it, especially when you got the round back, because now you swap sides. Now you're on defense. You got three rounds on the attack. Let's look at the macro, people. We're outside. Three rounds on the attack is huge on consulate, not just with the meta, but also given the fact that this map is so... I guess, so open for any defender that wants to move and roam. And that seems like a hybrid that G2 are bringing with the Valkyrie, but also the Fendid and the Pulse. Playing the split side, servers, towers. That is almost never played. Only eight plays so far throughout the tournament. It was won seven of those times by the defense. And usually you're a bit like, ooh, the split side is quite difficult to vertical. hold onto. But it's vertical. You kind of need to have basement if you want to actually get a plan down. It's also something G2 really enjoy doing, which is first picking the sort of off the beaten piece side. It's something that it can shake the attackers. If you are saying, we need to win this first attack, and suddenly you're locked onto something else, even if you've got a prepared play for it, anything that adds 5% of doubt can turn into 50 when it's as loud as this stage can be. Three apiece, G2. They have themselves a nice bit of intel gathering alongside the Pulse and the Solus and the Valkyrie. They've actually kind of got a good lockdown on all the intel, both players and technology. And as they are starting to open up some of the uh, default utility, think of, uh, well, uh, one of the walls actually, there, uh -oh. uh, Heart Breach. That's Phelps just running through right now. That needs to be a oh, no! Oh, 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 o
up for the second though, Ness. Shuts him down, but you lose your blitz. That was a huge part of the attack. I mean, what a tragedy there. The blitz had the flash. They had support and cover. They just ADS and tried to get the kill, and Benja held down left mouse click and got the perfect result. You got support behind you. Trust your teammate. Let them get the kill. Just flash and try to block that damage. It was not played well. At least a kill was traded off at the end of it. But still, there are powerful ops on the other side. You still have two Nitro Cells. You have, in Virtue and Alamo, of course, playing. You have a HUD, you have a Pulse, you have a Fendry. There's a lot of intel from Valk. A lot to play no. with. And a kill from Doki, but not the other. Almost swung around either side. But again, this game from Liquid, they are making sure that every loose player has at least two of the Brazilians either side of them. It's a three versus three with a minute on the clock. They're still trying to aim an angle their way. You look at what they've lost and it's maybe the herald of an A push and maybe the design towards the B, but with hard breach, with Docker B for some crowd control and with the IQ, they have a great selection of guns and a little bit of utility for what is going to be the swing on towards the site itself. But the concern here is that verticality. Two C4s and a pulse, all the intel that they can utilize to build behind anything that is attempted on the second story. It's turning into a little bit of a nightmare here for Liquid. Virtue missed them though. Luckily, Uno was watching the hatch because they all were rotating around when he was watching the opposite side of it. They did not know where they are. Now the Nitro is going to be prepped as the plant is being attempted. Uno gets shut down as Reset pushes in. Two versus two at this point and they pulled off the kit. They find a kill though. Virtue swung his way up. They look away at the worst possible second. They don't have the connection. Reset! through the wall! I mean, Liquid, they read it perfectly, knew where they needed to have a player and sort of said, look, you stay up there, I'm going underneath. I have a couple of G2 players and my bullets have their name on them. I will say it is a very ballsy move from G2, like Hap mentioned at the start of the round, to take the split site to play on. It's beautifully set in the way that it is. You're playing the vertical, you're also getting a trade kill every time. You get one kill and then you get refract. It's okay, it's fine. You keep the, that amount of, that no, those numbers for you to use, but the ability of resets to drop down here on the Habana, get the first kill and get into position to close down the second is beautiful. That's why this site is so tricky to play because and went with a pulse solo because you need to get the intel and then use the nitro cell. You need someone to remain with you. And I feel that in the round, the Fenrir didn't really get to do what they wanted to in slowing things down and cutting off those line of sight. I think that G2 might have gone a bit too aggressive there when it was the 3v3 situation. They saw Solo coming down from Spiral, they tossed the Nitro Cell rather than holding the close angle. Uh, the post was going up the staircase as well towards the upper sides rather than playing it below, guiding the Nitro Cell with the cardiac sensor. So you basically left your, your, your teammate there in a 1v2 situation. I think if they play that a bit more passively, not that that's a G2 play style, quite aggressive, but they might have been able to bring it across the finish line that case. We might be about to do a little bit more Brazilian and juggling, which is when you juggle a Brazilian in and out of a window on a second story for a bit to try and play against utility. Reset will be the one that steps into the shoes that Alamau had pretty brilliantly before, but Volps doubling down on the Blitz. I mean, it was successful until it suddenly wasn't, but you could have made it perfect, and they'll know that more than anybody else. So instead, they'll see if they can try and lead with that iron fi flashy fist. What do you do now with the Amaro? We saw how G2 were able to utilize the operator themselves of just trying to baiting for a plant. Can resets pull something off in the same way or does he have another game plan? He's either going to be playing this from below and go up the hatch or he's waiting for the Blitz to make a good move. But as he goes in, it's just complete shut down from G2. Only Palu left. There's only been 10 seconds gone since the first kill. I think he's looking like T. Where are you? What? Why are you all dead? What so happened? That is when Brazilian juggling goes bad and you unfortunately get in, but you have already exploded. They've thrown the utility and timed it well with your push. And that is in a way the negative thing about the E1D because if the defenders don't care, there it is. If the defenders don't care to be spotted, then they'll know that that sound means they're about to try something. So let's just throw our C4s, pop our Goyos, play against it. We'll either waste it to an E1D or we'll waste an entire team. It's like when some teams and some players will do it. This is like a great reaction. It can backfire, of course, but you're in a kind of 
dead or maybe I'll die a bit later situation. Somebody's flashing you. What do you do? Do you sit back and just take it and die two seconds later? Or do you just say, you know what? They're going to pop gun. the flush. I say it. I, I see the flash coming at me. I'm going to fire and hopefully I can get something. We saw that on Clubhouse, I think, yesterday, and it played out wonderfully. In this case, everybody collapsed in and then everybody was just vacuumed immediately out and vacated out of console. I think he's saying I'm having a great time playing Rainbow Six Siege with you all. I love Rainbow Six Siege. <laughs> I love Rainbow Six Siege. In Portuguese. In Portuguese. Now, I think that's what's being said. I don't speak very good Portuguese, though. A big thing about these top four executes we usually have is the ying, but that got removed in the bands, of Absolutely. course, because usually what you see is a lot of flashbangs being tossed out, which makes it so only the warden has the opportunity to take the fight. The other thing you then do is toss out those C4s, but that's the bait that goes with it. Candela goes out, there comes a C4, Candela goes out, another C4, and then you can go for a plant. That's not going to be there now. It is that interesting ban removal as well of the mute that was played by Liquid here. How much of a problem they think that would have been towards this map and this whole sure it's a limitation on the drone game it's a limitation on a game that i said they did very well but there's several ways for a team of these two teams caliber to stop against that game to play against that game so maybe it's a focus on walls or just you know some of that utility drive that is mute the best option to take out of this defense? Time will tell. I mean, the mute gadget is not as strong as it used to be. Yep. You could block out the entirety of like yellow stairs in the past. No, obviously, we're many years beyond that at this point. But if Liquid deem it that, hey, maybe this is something that's blocking us out, maybe it'll just deny our drones. That's something to think about. What I did like is Volp swapping from the buck off to the ramp. They got the, the droning in. They got the intel. Hey, we're going to need more vertical top down. So let's just bring the ramp. It'll open everything for us. But you do need that top four control, and you need to avoid Nitro Cells being flung at you. Heavy roam game, though, from the side of G2. Only two players are currently on the site. The rest is playing around that first floor, which, of course, directly leads into the verticality that is going to be playing into the site itself. And as long as they can just stay out here and support one another, Liquid might be up for a bit of a surprise because we saw some misinformation in the last round. If they miss information again this time, they're going to be in trouble. Well, there's the grenade that they for a second wanted to swing into, but they're in a position where they just clear utility. There is a dangerous game. Uh, Jiggle Peak Nesk usually doesn't always go your way, and they have realized that. Pull back instantly. Nesk with the lockdown on the roam. It's a double down as well with the Nomad. They're going to make sure that their site is focused and driven. They have bodies above and bodies below. And Doki, how long are you going to sit here in a situation that becomes thinner and thinner as time goes on? Benjas behind the desk. And Alamau is behind. Ness gets the take. Doki gets Volps as well. In and amongst the chaos, they've been able to take a couple of bodies and fight for the trouble. I said, don't always peek on that swing, but Doki takes out resets. There's Benja. He's sort of saying, I'm sorry, mate. I don't have your ticket. You've got to go elsewhere. This desk is closed. Look at this. Flawless again. Back to back flawless that we're seeing from G2 here. And again, the heavy roam game out there. And they're just winning those gunfights, leaning into it, not being afraid to back down, but then lean back in twice as hard. And that's the heavy roam is that it seems like G2 are baiting Liquid into a position where they feel they're comfortable. So what do they do? Hey, we're playing all the way at the bottom. Sure, you could take the top floor. Use your ram. Take your time. Because we don't care. We're going to be playing closer towards yellow stairs. We're going to shut you down there because you, we know now that you're going to be able to kind of send Nesk over to that position. Oh. Well, he's the first eliminated. And what do you do when you're trying to breach? Well, you end up losing more and more ops because your vertical play was not successful in bringing anything because all the other ops are actually in, you know, under un indestructible positions. Defend it at the end to isolate. Get in their heads. There you go. Get in their heads. Five to four for Honestly. G2. This might break the mind of Team Liquid. Well, they haven't taken their time out. They yeah, exactly. still think they can pull it back. They're only one round below. Before, it's, it's just two rounds know, in a man. row. It's the second time this map, two rounds have been threaded together. Five seconds left. And we are going back to the split site here, and I'm still like thinking that G2 should have won that if they played it a bit more passive rather than the aggression that they showed when it was a three-on-three -three situation. The roam game, that's fine. You can have that out there. Actually, bring the Capkins now just in case there is another Blitz running through, uh, so you might be able to blow them up before they are successful. But if you were able to just slow it down a little bit more in those final seconds, use the teamwork and the synergy between your gadgets and utility, they could be finding themselves with some good success here counteract the gadgets. What do you do? You bring in the Brava. It's a good reaction from Team Liquid. Hopefully they're able to cancel out as, meant, as much of, of the utility from Fendrir as possible because 
yes, it wasn't that big of a deal in the last round, but had they actually committed to the execute, Team Liquid, that is, then Fenrir would have become an issue. Yeah, would have become an issue, that's for sure. Uh, and of course, you know, at that point as well, um, back in the first round that they played in the fence, still was on the opposite side of the map, just holding off any rotations that came in from that side. So, good operator that you really need to take care of. Hatches are being in the open up though, so there is definitely an approach towards that basement site. Let's see if it will last this time. Still trying some crime, and this time an F dot is stolen. Uno, the man who owns them, is going to be disappointed, but he might sort of taper that by shooting people in the face. He's ready for a fight, and Alamau is ready for an appearance. Emergency exit, keenly watched, which will buy some support on towards maybe the window hatch. Lagonus is the potential victim, but as the calls come out, it's Doki. That is the first blood found. A minute and a half though, so it's taken much longer for that opening engagement to occur. However, it's much cleaner than it was with what happened with the Blitz previously. Steady incline towards the map and the site itself. Steady droning too. It's Alamal that finds the next, and Uno that finds himself out of there, untouched and unscathed for all the time that's wasted. Reset's completely <laughs> blinded though as he's moving through, but in the meantime, the roamers of G2 already left, except for one who went all the way up top. Two now, all the way up top. So they're gonna be playing this on multiple levels of verticality, not just from the bottom up, but also top down. Benja, he's on the hunt as well. And I mean, sometimes you shoot your friend in the face and sometimes you shoot all five of your enemies. And he's a player that has that ability. Oh. He's about to find one. Gets rid of Lagonis, the Docker Beast snuck up on and suddenly there's that cool, that sort of clarion action moment of they are behind us, they're around us, and we've only got 30 seconds. With Liquid not clearing for the first time ever, the top floor, this is biting them back. They already lost two players. You're down, man, and there's the flank from Uno. I mean, the fight is right on the window. He's able to get the end of it. It's a two versus two with 20 seconds. The kit is cold, though, and that's the big defining factor. Resets. He takes the point in the fight. The rotate isn't quite in his favor. Benja gets his second. The C4 is over. Oh! He's getting this threat to the needle. <laughs> Good job, guys. Great round, guys. Beep, guys. <laughs> Sounds like Tommy K, if you ask me. <laughs> it's rough. It's rough at Liquid right now. What are they looking at? The Tactical. end of their SI. So we take the time to talk because one round separates them from watching from the stands. I feel that, again, I'm not Fabian, but I can tell you, I believe that this timeout might be too late. Should have been called maybe in the last round, only time will tell, of course. But in the one round where Liquid do not clear from top to bottom, it becomes an issue because, well, now G2 can just maneuver between you and what happens, Benja goes upstairs, shuts down your flank that was oh so essential to lock out any rotations from G2 off those stairs. Yeah. Unfortunate. I also think they should have taken it after two flawless in a row. Yeah, absolutely, I mean, yes, absolutely. You're going back to a site you won before, but you. In my opinion, shouldn't have won it at that case. G2 had everything in the cards right there and well, didn't play it right. And, you know, with the right flank coming through here. I was going to say, it's actually a smart position for plant tap because when someone was going down the stairs, it's like they can catch the, uh, the uh, nitro cell off from the holes. Oh, Benja just blows them out of existence out here. Let's go, Benja! Let's fucking go, Benja! Come kill. Come kill me. Come kill me. So what a, what a me. finish way of looking at it. I'm He's sure. just looking to have fun. I don't need to tell <laughs> you to. Come kill me. I don't need to tell you to, but that is probably the most finished saying I've ever heard. I mean, everybody's watched the Kimi Raikkonen interview. Yeah, exactly. You know? So this is just normal Finnish people, if you're watching Uno. Cool, cool as ice. Cool as Absolutely. anything. And that's why they brought him on on the roster. That was the change that obviously happened between the previous SI run and this one, outside of some Swedish bloke who was behind Five them is gone, is... They needed him for the late round. They needed something to balance the fire and the fury of Alamau's early round calls to the cool collected, we have 20 seconds, what do we do, Uno? And this just shows that overnight, G2 recovered from losing to FaZe, and they've learned a lot of lessons to play and pit them directly against Team Liquid, even experimenting in the middle of this map. It is still not over, though. Liquid are trying to fight back, and Amonti is a response. Yeah, but they've seen it on the default cam just now. It was being watched while it was being shot out. Phelps, in the meantime, is entering from below as well, so 
there has to be some kind of bottom-up kind of play coming through out here from the uh, buck on side of Bulbs. And, you know, together with that Monty, maybe try and force the plant out, take no more than you need, and then see if you can make it stick. I mean, the A side is a definitely good position to do so because there is that little bit of the small awkward cubby out there where you can plant inside the door and there's relatively no cover. 6-4, still not a million miles away. We've seen whole flawless sweeps before and with the timeout, we've also seen flawless returns after it late on in the game. The problem here is G2 are very fired up and have been for most of this tournament. Even when they're able to flawless through their groups itself, a single knockdown means that this might be the game where suddenly all the importance, they get their heads together. Perfect read in the call. There's a C4 oh. that Benja wants to thread over the top, but Monty survives with the awareness. They pull around and they're trying to find the fight either side. Lagonas caught on the window. Nesk had the cover. Great team play from Liquid. Lagonis wants the drone, he's the IGL, and what does he do? He literally turns into the human drone. A bit of damage here on the Monty as we talk about Lagonis, but they've already dodged Nitro, as you said, and they're gonna try to re-maneuver into the second door, try to push through past that soda machine. That's a great way, I was just gonna be bringing that up as well. You can take that hallway so easily when you have that shield because what are they gonna do? Shoot the shield? Doesn't really do that much, that's what it's for. So, you know, to have the opportunity to walk by that stronghold position, by that chokehold, and then they need to try and get themselves inside so they can go for that plant with that Monty, but also make sure there's no utility as a second C4 gets popped. No connection from Virtue, but it will maybe connect some of the dots on where the G2 players are, so it can drive some of the focus. They've got to act before they get snuck up on, and there's the sneak. Benja and Alamal get one apiece of four versus three with a quick response from Volps here and a take from Nesk. They keep just the tightest hold on this body advantage, but with 30 seconds, Liquid, they gotta make some action happen. Virtue no. with a double. What, how did they get Everything on Nesk holding on here for Liquid's chances in SI 24, but no! G2, the reigning champions, keep reigning on the parade of other teams here at the tournament. And unfortunately, Liquid are covered in water, and they'll be washed out of this show, two to zero. It's such a painful way to go as well. The Monty lost, the teammate behind it lost for the cover. And after that, Virtue coming up the staircase, he was facing the skeleton key, but he managed to get two kills out of it somehow. I'm still confused how he managed to line him up, but overall G2 has been the leading factor, leading team in this game. It, it was beautiful to see, but like we called it, that timeout might have been the biggest crux of this matchup. Maybe Liquid could have come back, but we can ask questions and maybes all day, every day. The end of it, the reality of it, when we snap out, is that G2 are victorious and they keep their run. And let's remember, G2 last year, where do they come from? The lower Hello. bracket. Liquid, it ends here and they've had a little bit of up and down. Haven't quite been able to get themselves with the sort of continuation of form that we've seen them play at previous majors, at previous performances, and unfortunately for them, it ends here. But the heart and soul of Brazil is still very present, and they will be, I think, sorely missed. However, you know it's far from the end. Thank you very much, Mr. Losh, for Thank joining you. us. I, can I just say one thing? Of course. I have to say, I am an old man at 30 years old. <laughs> is that what you however, meant to say? However, I have to say, with me being on here, and it's not like I cast every day, it's been a massive honor to do so with you in this great game. But I gotta say, casters nowadays, they're 10 times better than I ever was back in the day. Aww. They all grow up, they're like my, my children, but I love them very much. Well, let's throw it to the other parent we have here, apart from Milos, our other host, Ian Chambers. I guess I'm the uncle, right? G2 rejoice and take a step closer to the main stage for Liquid. It is heartbreak here in Sao Paulo. There's a real obvious juxtaposition in dynamic and feeling and mood. It's right split down the center of this play area here. Heartbreak and happiness. My name's Ian Chambers, joined on the desk by the three-time world champion, Fabian and Benja, who raised the hammer alongside this man this time last year. Benja Master, welcome. Um, we speak about rejoice. You must be feeling phenomenal right now. Yeah, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. Benja, in the group stages, you know, you were on fire, the entire team, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0. And then yesterday there was a bit of a blip, you know, it threw you right down here into the dangerous place that is the lower bracket. What did you change specifically about your, your mentality and play style today? 
Mm, nothing other than like I think like in the rounds where we are about to lose, I just think I'll focus more on doing my job than trying to overcompensate, you know, for others. Yeah. All right, I have some questions, and these ones are going to be great. <laughs> First of all, with Romalio coming into your team, does he put you into bed as nice as I did and cuddle you before you fall asleep? No, he doesn't. He doesn't. He doesn't? No. So what you would say is that I am a better <laughs> personal coach than he is? <laughs> no, no, no. All right, no. well, <laughs> you, you overcame a Brazilian team in the playoff brackets for the first time. How does it feel? Like, it, it has to be a ghost. I mean, we all know it, right? Say again, sorry. How does it feel to overcome a Brazilian team in the playoffs bracket? Because oh. there has been a ghost. Nice, nice. I mean, it's always nice to send a team home, no matter like where they're from. Well, you sent them, they sent you home in Denmark. Yeah, that's true, them home that's true. We right talked now. about that before yeah. the game, yeah. Final question, how much do you miss me? A lot. Like, <laughs> Ka Carl is taking away all my mushy strats, you know, and you were there to support me, and now there's no one there to support me, so... Yeah, he doesn't know. value you yeah, like I yeah. did. It's oh, kind of oh. sad. Yeah. Are you done? Yeah, I'm pretty I don't know done. if we let him ask questions anymore. <laughs> I think that was a great interview. <laughs> no, it was, it was awesome. Um, Benja, obviously, last year I mentioned it, you raised the hammer. How much is that playing on your mind, you know, to, to do some tremendous history here? Uh, nothing, to be honest. Like, we are not here to defend a title, we are here to win a new one. Like, that's how I see it. All right, cool. Are you going to do it? Um, let's see. What, what One game at a time. All right, Benja, thank you so much for joining us here and best of luck tomorrow. Thank you. Fab. I like your interview style, you should do more. Yeah, I mean, it's a it's a personal <laughs> touch to it. Much more personal. I mean, we cuddled so much. Like, I fed him food because he had never tried anything. So, you know, we went to a restaurant, we ordered nice food, and I just spoon-fed him. Literally. Well, that's not even a joke. <laughs> I, want to, I want to hear one of your bedtime stories, that's for sure. But let's get right into business now. Fresh has joined us as well. G2, we talked about their mental block against Brazilian teams. Fresh, that wall has been broken down with force. The end when um, when they were celebrating, Romalio, the coach, to Almao said, "We did it!" Literally shouted it at him. Um, and yeah, they've got the all the way through it. If they're over and through it, we're looking at G2 that can go all the way. Like before this game, there was still that question. If they've got over that mental block, they can go all the way now. I think, and this probably will be agreed with, there are still two very big Brazilian opponents ahead of them. I think that both W7M and Face Clan are better Brazilian teams to go up against, and I think they're a better understanding of the meta. So I think that until we see them play against them and beat them, then we won't know if the ghost is fully gone, but there are so many good teams still left on you know, the other side of the bracket. Absolutely. Um, G2's attacks on Consulate, just phenomenal stuff, Fresh. Yeah, they, they absolutely get it. It's the same, sim very similar story yep. as Oregon. They got themselves onto a free, free split, um, you know, led by Benji Master again. Just want to say that had another phenomenal performance. If we had any doubts, any concerns about him, I think he's tucked those to bed going in, you know, after finishing this game. But yeah, they got a free, free split. Um, and again, we rely on G2's defense so well. Once they've got that 3-3 split, they rely on that defense so well. We don't, <laughs> they yeah. do. Um, and I've actually got a clip for their attack. Should we run it? Uh, let's run it, let's run it. Um, it was one of the most genius attacking plays I've ever seen in my life. Now, this is very standard, an Amaru CEO plant. What isn't standard is the Amaru jumping back out to bait the defenders to try and retake that position. Because as soon as the plant's going down, defenders have to try and take that position back and stop that plant, otherwise it's game over. So Yamaru's in, Amaru's out, or jumps out. Amaru's in again, starts planting, jumps out again when there is another C4. All of the defender utility is now gone. And the third time, he Amaru's in again. Now the plant is, they're not actually trying to plant here. They're trying to bait out all of the utility until they are 100% certain they can plant. You'll even see Alamo jump off the plant again and then get it the third time. Great cover on the repel by Uno. Now, for me, that play was one of the smartest plays I've ever seen in terms of that Amaru, because lots of teams, they just try to execute on a, on a strat like that. They just try to get in, get the plant down and play the post plant. G2 actually played the layers to it to bait out all of the utility and then go when it was 100% set. And I think that was the biggest difference between the two teams looking at this game, because G2 actually looked comfortable every time they had into attack. And I didn't, didn't think that Liquid looked comfortable a single time. They kept getting flanked, they kept being taken by surprise. They just kept making rookie mistakes for being as experienced as they are. Pretty unacceptable if you ask me. I am wondering what's going to happen for them in the future. I'm gutted for them. I think you can't not love this game and, and not be gutted for Team Liquid here because is their future as this current roster now fresh in jeopardy? You would have to say so. I think I said, I said it in the pregame of, of this game was how, are they too far gone at this point? Have they failed in finals and international events too many times for a roster that, and let's be fair, Fabian, you know, you'll say it as well, they should have won at least one major or 
a, an event in their time. Obviously, we're, they won a Pro League final, but that was ages. And Lion wasn't bannable. And so Lion wasn't bannable, so you're going to discount it. Are they too far gone? So at this point, is this the end of Liquid as we know it? Maybe, maybe not. You would have to assume drastic changes get made because they will have been pinning their hopes and dreams when this SI got announced to be in Brazil. The whole year, they will have pinned their hopes and dreams on success at this tournament to limp out of groups, losing the lower, uh, losing the upper bracket, and then losing the lower bracket. Catastrophe. And they looked poor whilst. Yeah, they, they they didn't look like they were going to do well. It's one thing if you go out and you put your everything into it. Yeah. You've like gone in and you've done all that you can and you there feels like nothing else could have been done differently and you still lose. But that's not the liquid we saw today. I don't feel like they did everything. At least gameplay wise, I was not convinced. Yep, gutted for them and gutted for all of their fans here in Brazil, but for sure there will be Brazilian teams that they can cheer for when we get there. Um, look, let's take a look at our Intel play of the day, uh, of the game, sorry. Of course, it was the Benja Master 4K, Fabian. It's just Benny. He, he <laughs> just finds these gaps. And then the, the L85, it, it's it's like he's, wow. uh, yeah, he doesn't miss a shot. It's a laser gun. He, he just goes in and then he decides, well, the four of you, well, a snap a finger, Thanos them away, and then that's it. That's Benny. He's incredible. <laughs> He's just incredible. Look at his team hyping him up as well. Yeah. They know he had a rough day yesterday. Yeah. Doki's literally stood up. And you wouldn't be able to tell, but Doki stood up. He's literally like, <laughs> No difference when yeah. he sits and stands, I I was speaking to Tim upstairs. I just think there's something special about this G2 roster. Uh, you know, they're almost like rock stars. I just think the way they carry themselves, the atmosphere between them all, they've all got different personalities. I think they're a real key element of what makes this so entertaining. Knowing them, yeah, they are rock stars in their own way. However, there are things that they definitely have to work on in the background that I'm not going to be speaking on camera about. Okay, sure. We'll yeah, talk about it later sure. in the back. He's not allowed. Contractually, no, contractually yeah. He <laughs> do, like, honestly, it would cost me two million pounds, so I can't. Sorry. And he That's only has one. You, you, I, I, I don't even have one. You were three have. hammers. You got that in, in the bank. Um, go to Ubisoft.com right now to make your SI predictions. You're running out of time, so get those predictions in quickly for your chance to win alpha packs and much more. It's well worth doing, isn't it, Fresh? Yeah, I did them. Got them wrong. <laughs> but you're normally the, the biggest brain in seeds, right? Let's take a look at the Elim bracket now before we start to wrap things up here today. And look, we are getting ever closer fresh to this all been done. Yeah, we're so close. We're so close to main stage, only one day tomorrow. Big news of this, there will be maximum of two Brazilian teams on the main stage. FaZe are 100% already there. The only other Brazilian team that can get there now is W7M. They've got to go through SSG tomorrow. So for Brazil on home soil, they will have a maximum of two teams in this bracket when it all looks so good before the tournament that they would have four, maybe more. Let's take a look at all the eliminated teams just to recap and, and, and refresh our memory here. You know, commiserations to, to all of them that have taken part here. And it's just the way it works, isn't it? It wouldn't be a tournament if we didn't see them drop out. You know, in a tournament, when there are X amount of teams, everyone else lose except the winner. Number two is first loser. So everyone has to go out. I think that it's kind of a natural selection at this point to a certain extent. You know, we are expecting some teams to go out earlier. And yeah. I feel like the reasonable choices of who went out today, yeah, those are my picks. Yeah, I mean, maybe, maybe not loss. I guess you would expect maybe loss and liquid to maybe maybe a but bit at more. the same time they've not looked convincing for no all. i think all of these teams maybe apart from fury have not looked convincing throughout the tournament fury were you know so close and put Very a great close. show as well yeah i think both of these southeast asian teams as we you know we go on to see bleed as well both of them did the whole of the apac region so proud they and i did. think you know the fact that going into next year they're, they're obviously going to have to be much more competitive with each other yep. just to even get to this event next year they both got to the bracket. They both, you know, won games in the bracket and did their region proud as a whole. It's hard to watch that footage, isn't it? Because you know that these players are putting blood, sweat, and tears into into this game and into this esport. And this is what it's all about. This is the World Championships. This is what everybody's looking forward to. And then when you don't make it, it obviously cuts deep. But like I said, commiserations to the teams that have dropped out. And now it is all eyes on those remaining. We've got one more play day here in the playoffs. And Fab, it's going to be another banger, isn't it? Yeah, it's going to be a crazy day. I, I'm so excited for tomorrow. It's, it's going to be really fun. I'm going to put you on the spot, Fresh. Yes. Who's winning SI? Dark Zero. Oh, really? 
I've just predicted a North American team to win SI. Um, I it's think, actually, thought. no, Dark, Dark Zero or Sonics. I think both of those teams, particularly Sonics though, have, have looked incredible with very little weaknesses. Every other team, I think, in terms of the teams that you see here, um, have shown something. Yeah, have shown something that's in a weakness. Maybe apart from FaZe, can I just say all of them? Winner yeah. of FaZe versus Sonics, that's the winner of the event. I, I think Virtus Pro is a I actually said Sonics were my kind of dark horse before yeah. the event. The reason I said that is they had a very easy group, and then I saw them go into that group and win everything 2-0 flawlessly. They then get into the bracket and they do another 2-0. <laughs> they're, they're really on something at the yeah. minute, Sonic. And I mean, I think if we look at the games that we have left and the teams that are remaining, we have the best out of the 20 teams here. We yeah. definitely do. Yeah. I, there's no argument. Like, when we look at the gameplay, it feels like all the puzzle pieces have kind of just fallen into place and they've been placed correctly. So I, I think we're, we're in for a massive show this weekend. All right, Fresh, MC Hammer, the three-time champ himself. Thank you very much. It's always a pleasure sharing the desk with you guys. It's an honor. And for you watching at home, thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed every single map and every single round as much as we did here. We are having the time of our lives. And trust me, we are just getting started. We will see you tomorrow for our final play day of the playoffs. Do not miss it.